the Nittany Lions Shrine, a point of pride here in State College, Pennsylvania, just outside a historic rec hall, the home of Penn State Wrestling, and this year's NWCA All-Star Classic on Flow Wrestling. Tonight we'll see All-Americans and NCAA champions from around the country collide in an evening of freestyle and folk style wrestling. With five wrestlers on the card tonight, Penn State fans will have plenty to look forward to. All eyes of the wrestling world are on a pair of three-time NCAA champions, Carter Storacci and Aaron Brooks of Penn State. The duo is vying to become the sixth and seventh four-time NCAA champions in the sport's history. Good evening, I'm Christian Piles, and tonight I'm joined by four-time world and Olympic champion, David Taylor. David, you won a lot of matches in this building. Describe to me the excitement and the experience of wrestling inside a rec hall. I think just being here, you start getting goosebumps. This is the most electric venue in college wrestling. The fans are back in rec hall, and they're looking forward to great wrestling tonight. Yeah, cannot wait for it. Let's take a look at uh, the first half of matches uh, that we're going to be having here this evening. Uh, David, of this first half, which matches are you excited about? Well, I think right off the bat, looking at um, Noto and Ramos. You know, Matt Ramos just came off a, a pretty tough upset at the Clarion Open. I'm really interested to see how he kicks off the first 30 seconds of this match tonight. What's his energy level look like? What's his attitude? And Noto's tough. He's from Lock Haven. I imagine the fans are going to get behind him. So that's going to be a really interesting match to get started. It's always exciting when Matt Ramos is on the match. High-flying wrestler. David, in the lead-up, we've been talking about Udugo Nawachku. How has she caught your eye? I mean, she had a great spring this summer, or this spring and summer, getting started, winning the U.S. Open as yeah. a college athlete, wrestling Kayla Miracle in a battle, you know, a multiple-time world medalist. So I'm really excited to see her tonight. Stepping out as a favorite now, and it's kind of seeing how, how her expectations are as she steps on the mat here in Rec Hall. No doubt about it. Let's look at the second half. David, we got a lot of Penn State on this second half of action. Which match are you excited about? Well, I mean, they're, they're not, you can't miss them, right? Getting off the bat right away, we got Kyle Parco and Shane Van Ness. That's a rematch of last year's third, third place match in the tournament. They both ended the year with a ton of momentum, have good starts to this season, and they're going to get battling right off the bat. At 174 pounds, we have a rematch of last year's NWCA All-Star Classic, Carter Storacci versus Makai Lewis. Kind of a low scoring affair last time around. What are your expectations this time? Well, Carter and Makai, you know, national finals match, last year's NWC uh, All-Star match, they've had tight matches. Both have great re-attacks, good offense, but the difference so far has been Carter's mat wrestling. So I'm interested to see how Makai has made the adjustments, but Carter's walking out into his home gym. He wants to wrestle hard. He talks about scoring a lot of points, and I'm excited to see him come out with that energy tonight. It's going to be a battle. Talking about home gym, it's the home debut for Bernie Truax Jr. He's the second-ranked uh, wrestler taking on Parker Kekheisen. and David, what are your expectations for Bernie? You know, Bernie making the transfer from Cal Poly to Penn State. This is the first time that he's stepping into the rec hall arena and wrestling Parker who he split matches with before. Parker has wrestled a lot of pins, you know, former pins at matches with Aaron Brooks. Parker wrestled a pretty aggressive style. Bernie's a little more counter offense. It's a clash of styles. You know, obviously I, I think this fans could play a factor in that match. No doubt about it. And someone you know really well, Aaron Brooks, a training partner, an opponent. He's taking on number two Tanner Sloan. What are your expectations for that match? Well, Aaron Brooks up to 197 pounds, established himself as one of the best wrestlers in the world, just off a U23 World Championship, get an opportunity to test himself against last year's national finalist Tanner Sloan. I would expect Aaron to come out with his offense ready to go and look to put up points and keep scoring. Plenty of offense, plenty of wrestling, but wrestling wasn't the only thing on my agenda this week. David, you graciously invited us to your home. We checked out a newfound hobby. Tell the folks at home a little bit about Farmer Dave. It's been a good change for us. You know, we moved just outside of town, 15 minutes outside of town. We have some property, we have animals. We have three cows, two goats, and a pig. The pig tried to take off Christian's hand. I told him <laughs> not to mess with that pig. It's the fastest, most aggressive pig I've ever seen. <laughs> and our cows are more just overgrown dogs. But it was great to have you guys out there. And But now, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time we spent a lot of time on the mat. It was a great time to spend some time with you off the mat. And now I'm getting ready to watch some great wrestling. Thanks so much for that, David. We enjoyed coming out there. A reminder. Tonight's event is sponsored by Dolomer, the official mat of Flow Sports. All Flow Wrestling events, including tonight's, will be wrestled on Dolomer mats, the undisputed leader in sports surfaces. And with that, we are ready to get this party started. We're going to get it going with 116 pounds after this.
No doubt about it, we're in wrestling country, David. As you see the fans filing into historic rec hall. Now we're gonna hand it off to our PA announcer, Rodney Martin. Good evening, fans, and welcome to Historic Rec Hall on the campus of the Pennsylvania State University for the 2023 NWCA All-Star Classic live on Flow Wrestling. Tonight we showcase 14 matchups featuring some of the best in collegiate wrestling. Let's get started at 1.16. Our first contestant in the blue is a sophomore from King and currently number two in the nation, Samara Chavez. Her opponent in the red is a junior from North Central and currently the top ranked wrestler at 116, Sydney Petzinger. All right, go time here. A little bit of freestyle. This is your style, David. Maybe yeah, I'm start excited. Here with uh, maybe see some laces, some trap arms. Yeah, we got Sammy Julian on the mat, one of our best referees. You know, obviously at, at the World Championships, at the Olympic Games. You know, we got we got a really good staff here uh, on the mat here. So looking forward to this. Getting the action started. So we're gonna have Samara Chavez taking on Sydney Pe uh, Petzinger. Petzinger in the red, Chavez in the blue, and we are underway. They are match number that music. one of the night. Two on one right away there for Petzinger. I think in freestyle, it's so important that establishing the center, right? Obviously, you know, here we have the you have the flow graphic here, but in most freestyle matches, you have that center circle. But a lot of times, you know, it, we have to make that transition. So here we're watching some freestyle, and obviously we're going to get into folk style. But in freestyle, it's not necessarily the most offensive wrestler that earns the passivity clocks. It's the person that controls the center. So obviously, we see a shot here looking to run around, but um, I think Petsinger's doing a pretty good job here of controlling the two-on-one, kind of dictating the center circle. So I would, I, would, I would look to see Blue get put on the first kind of passive warning here. And just as David says that, the mat official was indicating towards Blue momentarily as they head towards the zone. Two-on-one for Chavez now cleared out. So Middle here, of the mat there. I think if Petsinger just, just takes one shot, you're probably going to see a warning. And there you see there's going to be a passivity warning against Petsinger. <coughs> so That's just a warning. Next one, she'll go on the shot clock, 30-second shot clock. That was a little surprising. But sometimes, you know, they just do that to get the action going, kind of incentivize the other wrestler. Shot from Chavez, looking to throw by the underhook. Now, another attack, a good little flurry there from Petzinger, but Chavez able to evade for the time being. So the cadence of the shot clock, you know, for people that maybe aren't real sure, they're looking to give the opportunity to put somebody on the clock. So a lot of times you're going to see, oh, Lefty headlock, head champ, oh, four. Oh, wow, she's got to settle back and lift the head. Feet Settle to back. back's going to earn four for Chavez. Now she's thinking about the fall. Can she step over and get it? The arm is compromised for sure as she's trying to put it on the mat. In freestyle, I mean, it's so different. Freestyle's so different than folk style. Like, they do not stop things from potentially dangerous. I mean, it's like you get someone in position and you can put them on their back and you finish the match. Like, you have a lot of leadway. And you saw that there with that. Arm getting bent back, and Chavez jumps out to a 4-0 lead. Nice job with that left-handed headlock. So I was in the middle of kind of talking about the passivities, but they're, they're pretty much irrelevant at this point. Once, once there's points on the board, especially a four-pointer, you're not going to see passivities come into play at the rest of this match. I mean, I, I don't necessarily think we're going to be there, but once the referees kind of see that type of scoring, they're kind of kind of stay out of the match for the rest of the time. So now it's going to be up to Petzinger to get points on the board. You saw Chavez go to that. Head pinch position, cleared out as they stalemate it back to center. They go one minute to go in the first period. There's two periods in freestyle, two three-minute periods. It's Petzinger marching forward with that left-sided underhook. Bring it towards her. another left hand. This time, Petzinger ready for it. Gets a takedown of her own, and now she's working on a gut wrench right side. Can she get it? 
Petzer's doing a good job with that left-handed headlock. She got a little too excited in, in getting headlock, or left hand, left side underhook, walked right into a headlock, but that was a good adjustment, went right back to it, started taking center, felt the headlock, got the takedown. It's been a good match so far, exciting. A lot of action to get it started. A reminder, there are no ties in, in freestyle wrestling. Someone is always winning, so if Petzinger were to get two, there's a double leg straight on, and they're gonna say four. Let's see what the, the judge says two. And Chair says two, so that's going to be just a two-point. And now Chavez trying to take her through, David. Don't quite expose yet. Nice job. So on that takedown, what they're looking for is exposure off that takedown. So if you, if on the double leg, if you hit an elbow, post a hand, probably going to be four. But she did a good job of turning down and not exposing her back. So obviously only giving up the two takedown. But that's, that's a big momentum changer. You know, give up two four-pointers. You're down eight to two. Giving up two fours, that's a long way back. So only giving up the takedown keeps her still in this match. Single leg from Petzinger, but then she comes up with an underhook. Swing and a miss on that lefty headlock again. No slip, though. Looking for the gut wrench, now working up around the arm as time about to expire here for the first period. So a little momentum on Petzinger's side at the end of the first. That's a good period. I mean, I... I would say with Petzinger, the big adjustments here, I would, you know, the coaching is like, hey, you're getting the underhook, you're doing a good job, but you're standing up in your underhook. You're giving her a good chance. Although she felt the headlocks, I would say in the underhook, lowering your level, a little bit more pressure. You know, now your snaps are in play. Maybe you're, you're catching the headlock. Um, and for Chavez, you know, what you're doing is working, but you're going to have to score again. I wouldn't feel comfortable with this 6-4 to four lead. There's going to be more points on the board. If you're, if you're Chavez's coach, are you saying, all right, let's abandon the, the left side headlock? I mean, it's, if, it, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know, but it's, she's been successful with it, but it's time that she's going to have to start mixing it up or maybe looking for an alternative uh, scoring tactic here. But we haven't seen much out of her outside the headlocks. Back underway here in the second period, Petzinger holding center. She looks for a leg attack, cleared out by Chavez. Now slide by potentially, but not there for Petzinger. So we've only seen, you know, one passivity warning on Petzinger. I, I think that now the passivity warnings could maybe come into play a little bit with the way this match has kind of gotten a little tighter. But I don't think they're going to impact the match enough. I think that obviously Petzinger is going to have to score and probably score two times. So a four-pointer carries a little bit more weight. So in a 6-6 tie, uh, Chavez is still going to be winning on criteria having the four-point exposure. Straight on double attempt again, but Petzinger able to catch and pull up some underhooks of her own. Now she's looking at headlocks. Oh, here we go. <laughs> he Settle it. back. Now close there to the is. fall. Fall confirmed. Boom. It's over. A pin nice for Samara Chavez. That was exciting. Oh, man. Uh, Chavez got a nasty it, headlock. A nasty headlock. Your winner by you said if it ain't ball, ball, don't fix Samara it. Samara Chavez. Chavez. Samara Chavez. Starting the night with a pin. Yeah. You can't beat that. I love it. I love it. What a start. So I want to know, that I think we're going to pull in the replay of that headlock, but what was it about it that made it so successful for her? What is Samara doing that's, that's enabling her to get well, the, back twice? Well, the first one, she was standing up in her underhook when she got headlocked for four. Um, I think this is the last one. She's, she's jacking her up, and I think she as she goes to change level, she's just getting extended. You know, body's too high, head's up. The girl's looking for a headlock, and, and she just let it rip. Yeah, great job there by Samara Chavez. And first match in the books is where set to go to 130 pounds next on number one versus number two matchup when we return. We're gonna take a look at that that headlock again. Here she is settling in for the pin. When we come back, we're gonna have 130 pounds. Sarah Savage versus Alexis Janiak. And now introducing our wrestlers at 130. In the blue, a sophomore from Aurora and currently number two, Alexis Janiak. in the red, a sophomore from life, and currently ranked number one, Sarah Savage. Our 
A number one versus number two matchup here, David. Sarah Savage versus Alexis Janiak. A little bit of history here. Janiak leads the series overall three to two, and she's won the last two at the 2023 U20 World Team Trials. We'll see how it goes this time around. You know, a lot of times you can just tell as someone's walking out, you can kind of see if they're ready. A nice and single leg there right away from Janiak, and there's a quick finish. And could be working on a leg lace. His, has it threaded through. Palm up. She's in great position for a lace. Gets one of the turns. This could be a match ending sequence. What she need to do, David? Just keep running your feet underneath. Keep your feet on the ground. You know, and folks out, we, you know, we tilt a lot. So our feet come off the ground. These girls only wrestle freestyle. So her feet are doing a really good job of staying planted and driving. And she's doing a good job. She's going to end this match. One more is going to do it. That's it. Nice job. 30 seconds is all we, she needs to get it done. Alexis Janiak, a 10 0 winner. Your winner. I was just going to say, you can tell when people walk out. And Janiak. Janiak just looks so confident, so calm, and he was ready to rock right in that whistle blue. Man. The ladies are getting the party started, David. We got a pin, we got a tech, and a great transition. And that's such an emphasis in freestyle wrestling, not just the takedown, transitioning from that takedown to the turn. What was Alexis able to do that enabled her to go from the takedown to the turn? It was just her, it was just her transition. I mean, she was takedown and just kind of took took her right on the whistle. She just kind of took the wind out of her sails and then transitioned, kept her kept her knees together, had the lace going, loaded up, and just kept her feet going. You know, Coach Steiner does a great job with these ladies. He's getting them very prepared. They're wrestling freestyle nonstop, and Coach Steiner is a big big believer in the leg lace. So I know he's sitting at home power springs and he's pumped about that. All right, coming up next, we're going to have Adugo Nawashku taking on Yili Aycock. Number one versus number one. I didn't know that was possible. And now introducing our wrestlers at 136. In the blue, a junior from William Penn, Adugo Nawashku. Junior from North Central, Yili Aka. All right, there you see Yili Aka making her way to the match. She's going to be an underdog here against Adugo Nawashku. David, we were talking about her in the open a senior level U.S. Open champion on the mat here tonight. Yeah, it's impressive. She had a great run. You know, in, in the finals, she beat Jen Page, who went on to win a bronze medal at the World Championship. She stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Caleb Miracle. And now you're right back. You have a number one versus number one matchup, but I would think her confidence is sky high, and I imagine to come out and be offensive right off the bat. Whistle blow, and we are now underway in the red. That's Ely Aycock taking on Adugo Nawachku in the blue. You know, one emphasis in freestyle, they don't want you finger fighting. They want to encourage as much wrestling as possible. So, you know, Sammy stepped in right away and said, hey, guys, we want to open this up. We want to, get, we want to keep our action going. Attacking the two-on-one. You want to get head position on the two-on-one. If not, you're kind of just holding position. However, you know, again, just by holding center. Oh, nice that double leg. Double and puts her down. That's going to be a takedown for Nawachku. Good little level change right into the shot. Gets a quick finish. So you don't have a lot of time. You, you really, they, they've given us, they started to give us a lot more time working here, but they're going to kind of give you a chance to really look to get for that first turn, maybe a second turn, and they're going to bring you up. Way to recover there. But, um, you know, obviously getting taken down there in that double leg, getting her knees apart, making sure she can get leg lace, and then did a good job defending in no gut wrench. So, um, you know, get right back up. Now you're still one takedown away from being taking the lead in this match. Another double from space for Nawachku, this time defended by Yili Aycock. She was looking for that headlock as she was coming up. And all, leading with those underhooks is Nawachku going to take her down for two right on the edge. Another takedown as it's now 4-0 for Nawachku. And she came up with those underhooks off the shot. That's a common setup you see. And just able to drive out of bounds. 
you know, I think, you know, as you dig double leg again, as she's coming up here, I mean, it looks like uh, Acock is kind of loading up and looking for that headlock, headlock there. So she's got to be careful recovering, not just standing straight up with double underhooks. We saw that before with Chavez executing that, t that, that headlock. So you want to be coming up with your head kind of like, you know, I, th I like to think about when you're coming up, you want the head coming up under the chin versus standing straight up with your chin in the air. If your head's coming up under your opponent's chin, you're going to keep you in a much better position. They break free, finger fighting there, now wrists for Acock. Working up to a collar tie is a Dugo Nawachku. And a shot from Acock, single leg, but shallow penetration there. A sprawl from Nawachku trying to defend and maybe counter score this position. Tough spot to finish from for Acock. Again, recovering off this shot, ready for the reattack. Don't want to give up a go behind. She's a good job recovering back up to her feet. That was good wrestling. Yeah, Those good are recovery huge. by Acock. Those are huge. You know, you want, you want, you may, you've gotten taken down twice. You take your first shot. It was a good attempt. Didn't quite get there, but she didn't keep her head down. She got her head up. She recovered back up to her feet, and you know, you kind of can start building on that momentum. You got 40 seconds left in the period. It's a really important period it, mat, uh, point in this match for both girls. Same Getting shot. a takedown head here wheel. is huge, one way or the other way. Now, now, now we're back into a match here. Scores in the last 30 seconds are huge going into the break. Had a mind for a gut wrench. Now goes figure four to Acock. And just a picture perfect single leg there. Got her head to the outside. Quick hit, finish there. Hit that same kind of inside reach shot before, got stuck. That time she got a good adjustment as she hit that shot. Her head popped out the other way. You know, you talked about a head wheel or rolling your head, getting that takedown. Just five seconds to go here in the first. And one last shot as time expires here. 4-2 Nawachku. Last time they wrestled, it was 10-0 for Nawachku. So a little bit of progress being made for Yeela. She's very much in this match. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I think that's a really you know, good, really strong start uh, for Nawachku and a really strong finish the period for Acock. So I think right now, uh, coaches for Acock are saying, hey, you know, your shots are working from space. You know, make sure you're keeping her on the offense. You're going to have to go get a takedown to win this match. Probably two takedowns. I don't think one takedown is going to do it. And coaches for Nwachku is like, hey, let's get back to our offense. Our double leg's working. Let's extend this lead and not give her a chance to stay in the match. Underway in the second period. They're tied up, snapping off that tie. Is Nwachku fires off that double you mentioned, David. Comes up around the body, and there's going to be a takedown. Extending her lead. 6-4, working for a gun. Left side gets it. Looking for one more. Head touches, and they go back up. 8-2 Nwachku after that flurry. You can't have a better start to the period. You know, getting started early in the first period, kind of hitting that lull. Feels like Acock was starting to get the momentum. You come back out, and she, you could just see her just demeanor change. Her fakes were working. She was putting her on the defense, executing the takedown right into the turn. And then now, you know, it's a, it goes from a one-score match to now you're in a position where you're, uh, you're building into a tech fall. But you want to keep scoring. You know, Acock has proven that she can score, and she's been close a couple of times. So Nawachku, you know, thinking, okay, I'm building my lead, but I'm building my reputation. I'm going to have to wrestle mm -hmm. this girl in the future. Um, I want to keep scoring here. You saw Acock trying to work those underhooks, but now it's a Dugo kind of engaging upper body. It looks like an over-under position. Acock clears out of it. Two minutes to go here in the second period. It's a six-point lead for Adugo Nawachku. I think your, your, your mentality switches a little bit um, for Nawachku. You're thinking probably a little more counter-offense. And that's going to be, that's what are we going to have here? Probably two, four Ooh. offered. Let's see, four wow. confirmed. And just like that, it's eight-six. And we're going to have a brick here. I think probably a good brick. Uh, what was your read on that? Was that feet to back? I don't know. Uh, you know, Sammy had a really good hit, a really good viewpoint. He did uh, on that. It's 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 very close. Um, from our angle, it's a little harder to see. So you know, they're going to go and they're going to look at it. They're going to review. It's a good challenge, I think. Um, but now that four pointer puts her right back in the match. Yep, big time. Because it's all twos for Nawachku. So if she were able to get to eight, she would take the lead. And we're going to take a look at it. She kind of throws it to the underhook and able to put her on her side. But let's see, does she this land be a good danger? Angle we got the replay here on the edge. Man. I'd say four. Yeah, I think so. Watch, she kind of launched herself thinking maybe cartwheel. Um, and I was kind of in the process of saying, you know, you're up eight to two. You're thinking counter offense. I don't think 
you want to be jumping your feet in the air and giving her a chance to four. You know, a push out on the edge there doesn't beat you, and it doesn't even really close the distance on the match. But even a takedown doesn't. But a four pointer now is that's a diff, that's I mean that's a big deal. You know, four pointers going to carry the weight in a tied match. And now, similar to the first period, Nwashu came in hot. Acock made adjustments again. Second period, the same thing, made adjustments, and this is going to be an eight-seven match with a minute and forty-six seconds left. For Nawachku, just staying on her feet and not dropping to her knees, defending that position might be what kept her in that feet-to-back position. We'll see as they Upon take review, a look at four confirms. So that's one more on top of it for the failed challenge. That's going to make it eight to seven. So one point for Acock will put her in the lead, David. Yep, tied match here goes to Acock. So. You're essentially back to ground zero. You know, both girls go right back. That double, double and underhooks gets her, that was a good adjustment. And they go on, over, under, off the double leg from Nawachku. A minute 30 to go. Plenty of time for Acock, but also plenty of time for Nawachku to build her lead as Acock continues to attack. But you know, probably needs to clear this upper body position and does. There's a nice shot. This is what she scored on earlier. Get in her head up, get up to your feet, hide your feet. So. Careful. So, watch who can post here as long as the post doesn't go behind her back. You want to get your foot on the ground here for Acock. If this foot's off the ground, she's not going to get the takedown. If she can get her heel down on the ground, she can score, but that was a good adjustment. No takedown. And watch who able to find that foot, pull it up, and prevent a takedown. It was great position for Acock for a moment. Acock's little inside pick with her right hand. She got a little pick that she's working on, and she got that nice long shot where she wheeled her head, and that time she got up, she doesn't quite finish in time. So that's her takedown. That's what she's looking for. 50 seconds left. It's how can I get to that leg? Even just getting it in the air and running her out of bounds, that puts you in the lead. But getting that takedown gives you a little bit of breathing room. And, you know, I don't think Nawachku's going to want to just stand around for 40 seconds because uh, Acock's proven that she can get to that leg and finish. 35 to go. You see the tactics that unfold here last little bit. Acock needs one point. And you got to go here. You know, you got 30 seconds to score. You, you don't want to leave it to her. You just got one simultaneous and shot. And it's Adugo Nawachku ended up getting the takedown, extending her lead to 10 7 with 15 seconds to go. Just a gritty takedown. Just kind of staying tough. You know, it's one of those where you both kind of hit at the same time. It's kind of who's going to give in, you know? And uh, Acock kind of turned down and gave up that takedown. It's likely going to be the match deciding takedown there. And now they're on the edge. That's going to be, I think, one more for Nawachku, and it is one confirmed on the step out. That all but does it with two seconds to go. And not without a fight, Adugo Nawachku, an 11 7 winner here. This is a great match so far. Your winner, Adugo Nawachku. And really what, what separated that match was the early second period sequence where Adugo got that takedown to that series of gut wrenches left side. Uh, I think we're gonna get a look at that here shortly. And this looks like the- This is towards another, the end, so I think. This towards the end, right at the beginning of the second period. Where she gets that early takedown and a series of gut wrenches. So we have one more women's freestyle match to go here. We're, we're gonna be seeing 160 pounds. But before that, a reminder, the NWCA All-Star Classic is presented by Defense Soap. The official soap and body wipe of Flow Wrestling, protecting you for over 15 years. Defend what you have built. Coming up next, 160 pounds, Marilyn Didi taking on Latifah McBride after this. Sport of wrestling. All right, fans, in this little break we have here, we got a little plinko wrestling going on. You see up there on the big You're faced with so North many challenges side, in this sport. Side, but skin side, infection side, shouldn't have to be one. For the ball to get and that's our mission. Slot. Defense Soap was created out of the need to fight back. Two, because one, we care about this sport. The families, the athletes, the coaches. And we want to continue down, to protect people from skin down. infections. Keep you on that. And that's our goal here at Defense Soap. 
defend what you up. Got to do it again. One more time. Reset. Three, two, one. Let her go. That's what I want to hear. We're going to get a winner this time. One more time. I think that's going to be it. No winners today. Sorry. And now introducing our wrestlers at 160. A senior from Iowa and currently code number one in the country. Marilyn Dee! Excited to have Marilyn Didi take on Latifa McBride. Of course, we had our first booze of the a light booze when it, when they said Iowa Hawkeyes. Because that's I don't think they're fan favorites here in, at Rec Hall, David. No, they're not. <laughs> uh, but but I think it's really cool. I mean, I just was as, as she was walking out in the Iowa scene, I was like, man, this is awesome. Yes. You know, Iowa having women's wrestling and and you know Cl Clarissa what she's doing there and obviously her, what she's done to, for women's wrestling in our country. And now, obviously, coaching Iowa. I saw a clip of the girls just recently, and they were just torturing, torturing their opponents. So I'm excited to kind of see them here front and center. Underway, 160 pounds in the black. That's Latifah McBride. And in the black of Iowa, blue ankle bands. Marilyn Didi, as we see, an underhook on that left side for McBride. Right away, good head position there as well. See, that's a big adjustment from what we saw earlier in the matches, where we saw the girls underhooking, but their head was up. With their underhook and their head down, you're taking a little more position. To the ref, it looks more like um, you're a little bit more on the offense. As you're kind of taking center, you're better, you're more in your stance. And as we say that, they're starting to warn uh, Didi for, for, for action here. And I would look, probably see him stop and put her on the clock first. Doing a good job controlling center. Elbow control there for McBride. Trying to get some head position, but definitely moving her around the mat. And as you mentioned, it's about your position on the mat for passivity if your points aren't going up. And certainly McBride was holding center there. And that's a big difference. You know, as we get into our focus on matches later, you know, you, it's, it's more about volume of tacks. Like, you know, we talk about kind of like a kneel-in shot. In freestyle, you could be kneeling in and, and being the action, guy, action girl or, or, or guy, but if you're constantly being backed up, you're going to get put on the clock. And McBride's right back on her. And I would expect to probably see DD put probably on the 30-second clock if the bride doesn't score here. Doing a good job of staying low, little steps. If she were to snap or maybe take, you know, hit her knee one time, you'd probably put Didi on the clock right away. Yeah, now double unders. There's a headlock. She catches it. Now tries to go feet to back, but maybe not going to be able to get it. McBride looking to recover here in decent position. Has that leg trying to lift it up and get a score here. She can elevate and start shifting back. Yeah, driving back to her left hip, I think, will make a big difference. You about getting her hip to the ground. You're going to get the exposure probably here. I think right here will probably take down. I would say two here. Yep, there it is, hand to hand. Now Didi's in the crotch lift, overhead two, two more for Didi. That's a good scramble. Get your feet back in the ground. So maybe a little confusion on the scoreboard. I thought McBride would have got that opening two. It says 4-0. They might have went two when she kind of put her in danger off that first score. And I think we're probably going to see a brick here. But maybe not. I mean, I could the, see when the coach has a brick in his hand. So they went nothing on the first exchange. I guess they're saying maybe that Didi didn't expose on that, on that sequence or that she took Latifa through. So they're going to conference and talk about it. Make sure the score 
is kind of agreed upon by the two out of three, and then uh, the life coach will have a, a decision to make if they want to challenge. So 2-2. Two, two. two red, two blue should be criteria blue then. That matters. So they may need to square out criteria, but either way, 2-2 two, two on the scoreboard. I would expect McBride to get right back to underhooks. Had a lot of success there. These girls have been ripping headlocks so so far. You know, I think there's, you know, there's, I've been known to rip a headlock from underhook. It didn't work out very good for me. I had to make an adjustment. Hey, you so won that I, match. I did, but I gave up points. I didn't need to give up. And I think you know you got to start making that adjustment because uh, ripping headlocks from double unders is going to be pretty tough for you. Oh uh, I think she got hurt there. Something happened. Yeah, she dropped there. Something, she some sort of head injury, and Didi was able to run up, run behind really easily. We'll see what the. I what think the call they is. Gave one for the push out there, and then I think they stopped it. I think it looks like she got poked in the eye. So getting some medical attention there is Latifah McBride. You see Clarissa Chun, head coach of the Iowa women's wrestling team there, with her athlete, Marilyn DD. So going to these underhooks, you know, um, you know, underhook is it's a it's a, such a valuable tool in freestyle specifically because you're earning you're putting the person on the clock, you're earning the pushouts. They make mistakes. You don't see it as much in folk style. I don't think the impact is as much because the pushout isn't a rule. Um, but it's been very prominent so far in these matches. And on the defense, the girls are getting stood up. And it's really hard. You know, as someone's underhooks you, you got to start to readjust your positioning and lower in your level. You get stood up and underhook in freestyle. You just don't have much place to go uh, when you get put on the edge. McBride good to go, and we're back underway. 18 seconds to go in the first period. And there's a shot from Marilyn Dede trying to counter here. Is Latifah McBride, nothing yet. 10 seconds to go here in the first period. And we'll see if McBride looks for a go behind here. Just kind of hanging in the position. And that's how the first period's gonna end. A 3-2 lead for Latifah McBride as we head to the break. It's a good period. Good. I mean, really just that one scramble where, you know, McBride was able to kind of create the scramble, exposed her, Dee, Dee came right under the crotch lift, and uh, then we got we had the step out here. So, been a really even match so far. The really big adjustment is is the underhook so far. So, you know, McBride getting back to the underhook, taking ground. Um, Dee, Dee did get a shot towards the end of the period, but I would say she's going to have to focus on keeping the underhook out and getting to her offense. And we're back out to center here. We're going to take a look at the... This eye poke here, but let's see what the injury was. But Marilyn Didi making her way back out as the 30 second period break has ended. A little headgear adjustment here. Headgear optional in these matches. And back underway, second period now, just a one point lead for Latifah McBride. If Didi were to get a point, she would be in the lead by criteria. Lose the headgear again. All right, and we're back to action, no headgear. Elbow control for Dee Dee as she circles out of it. Both girls kind of now engaging a little bit more in the hand fight, a little even hand fight. Dee Dee's got the collar tie. They're kind of both re collar tying each other. No real clear advantage. I would say, you know, McBride's doing a good job of lowering her stance and she's doing a good job of pressuring. So, I mean, this is a match where the shot clock can definitely become a factor here in the second period. Um, the refs have done a pretty good job of not really getting super involved, but I mean, it could come a factor if, if points aren't being scored. Just an inch away from the step out, but doing a good job holding Pat. And there's a headlock now. That's What's four. Not a headlock. I think four. Four blew the call. You're right, David. It's a big exchange. We haven't really seen Latifa engage in any like offensive leg attacks, but here, here's you know six three. You're gonna have to start picking it up more snaps, or you're gonna start having to, you know, cover ground and start getting the leg attack and creating some offense. And DD right here, you're just gonna have to be smart. You're thinking counter offense, building your lead, 
but you're keeping yourself out of positions. Like you want to see out of the wizard kick, the on the edge, giving up fours. We've kind of seen that a couple times. That's what's going to kind of make this match closer again. As long as you're just holding position, circling back in, steal a reattack here and, and build your lead. Smart wrestling. DD in on the leg here. Not great position. Doesn't want to give up a counter here to McBride. 30, 130 to go as they stalemate it. Back up on their feet they go. 6-3 lead for DD. And also a huge criteria advantage by having a four-pointer. I was Dee Dee does start to look like she's starting to get a little fatigue coming out of her stance a little bit. McBride seems to be in pretty good shape, but just she's gonna have to probably commit. You know, she's starting to get her level changes going, but level change alone is not gonna do it. You know, at some point you're gonna have to pull the trigger, cover ground, go get your hands locked. Incidental eye poke there, minute 14 to go, 6-3 lead for Dee Dee of Iowa. These are my favorite parts of matches. Minute 15 seconds left. It's a it's a score one way or the other way. It kind of comes down to at this point, it's a little bit of grit, determination. These are what you practice all the time. This is like this is what wrestling is about. Down by three, down by four, down by a takedown, minute left, digging deep, create the opportunities and scoring, or build your lead. You know, and I just I love this part of the matches. McBride far from out of this match. She's continuing to take ground, but the leg attacks and overall offense haven't quite been there for her yet. Good head position there for McBride. The finger fight on that right side. We'll see if the official breaks it up. No, they clear out of it before. 38 seconds to go. It's tough, you know, McBride, she's in a thumb block position. She's in a collar tie thumb block, which is more of your defensive position. You know, you're down by two scores of 30 seconds left. That, that's a tough position to be in if you got to go create offense. And, and Dee's just, hey, if you're not going to engage, I'm, I'm going to stand here in the overtie. I'm just going to down block. I'm going to get you in a front headlock. I'm going to run around reattack. That's great. That's great wrestling by Dee. That's just exactly what you want to see. You're up there. You're not taking any risks. You're smart. You get in the front headlock. You execute. You build your lead to end the matches. You know, Coach, Coach Clarissa is going to be really excited about her athlete finishing strong there. And as time expires, it's going to be an 8-3 win for Iowa's Maryland Didi. Congrats to Maryland. Congrats to Iowa wrestling. <laughs> Your winner, Maryland Didi. And a great opening set of matches here, Dave. We're probably going to take a look at that big four-pointer that Didi had. It really blew this match wide open. She did it from a wizard kick. She was getting underhooked. Yeah. She was getting stood up. She's getting out of bounds. She was able to keep her toe in and wizard kick. She got her foot between her legs and elevated to take her all the way to her back for four. It's a really good job there. I'm going to take one more look at that. And I thought in the initial it looked like a headlock most, but it was just a step in with that wizard kick, as you mentioned. And when they land in danger on their back, that's what makes it a feet to back four point sequence. And when we come back, we're going to do some folk style wrestling. 125 pounds, number one, Anthony Noto, taking on number four, Matt Ramos, when we return. It is B. 
And if you're wondering, it's Greg Kirkley, Aaron Brooks, Parker Kakaisan, Udugo Nawachku, Dean Hamidi, Carter Sirachi, and Makai Lewis. in a packed house here at Rec Hall. They're excited for the folk style action to begin. We're gonna be started with 125 pounds, number one, Matt Ramos, Anthony Noto. And now introducing our wrestlers at 125. In the green, a junior from Purdue and current number four, Matt Ramos. And his opponent in the red, a junior from Lock Haven, currently number one in the country, Anthony Noto. And a good ovation for Anthony Noto, Lock Haven, just down the road here from State College, Pennsylvania. Got to assume the crowd's going to be getting behind him. He's going to have his hands full with number four, Matt Ramos, who, of course, started this season number one. Took a couple tough losses, but, man, this kid can flat out wrestle. He's as exciting as anyone in the country, David. Yeah, I would expect Matt Ramos to get on the offense right now. I think he's going to be ready to go. Underway here, 125 pounds in the black and gold of Purdue. That's Matt Ramos. And in the red and white of Lockhaven, that's Anthony Noto. Matt Ramos controlling center right now. He's got a really powerful double leg. Good in the upper body ties. Anthony Noto can wrestle from everywhere, but from the top position is where he is lethal. Wrist control there as they clear out of it. First 30 seconds of this match, no committed attacks at this point. Ramos, you know, we saw it last year when we wrestled Spencer Lee. He just, the confidence that he, he derived when he wrestled his first match with mm -hmm. Spencer, which was just this firefight, insanity scoring situation where he ended up getting pinned, but he obviously left with a lot of confidence. And, you know, we talked about in his interviews last year at the NCAA tournament where he just, he just in his mind, he knew he was going to win. And he wrestled that match with so much just his calm demeanor and just confidence. It was just nobody's wrestled Spencer like that. You know, and then you come off of that, you know, season – and then you come right into the clearing open, and you're like, man, what the heck just happened? I just lost a high school kid. Yeah. And now you're, you, you come you, – but what I really liked about that is he wrestled back for third place. Like, nobody does that. Right. Especially in an open tournament where you come from that high of just not too long ago to, you know, a perceived low. 
Um, and then now we're right back in the all-star match, and he looks good. He looks good. He looks just like what I would expect him to look like coming out. He's in, He can score in so many situations. You know, he's a little cautious so far, but it's not going to take much for him to get in a crazy scramble. No question as it's more of a feeling out process this first minute and a half. Of course, if you haven't watched any college wrestling, a huge, huge rule change. Takedown's not worth two anymore. That's going to be an adjustment for this rec hall crowd. They're going to have to be screaming three, David. It's insane. I was at Super 32, and, and they started the, the three-point takedown down there. And I can't imagine how many times in my head I'm like, i got to say three, got to say three. And then I said two, and I'm like, I can't believe I just said that. One minute it's remaining. so hard because we've done that for our whole lives. So there's no way this crowd's going to be saying three. <laughs> 53 seconds to go here. No score yet. And for Ramos, you're curious, is he going to test the waters and go underneath Anthony Noto? We may find out a scoreless first period could force his hand here, depending on choice. Good club there from Anthony Noto, nothing yet. You see those level changes from Ramos. He likes to fire off a couple of those, seconds. get his opponent off balance, and then fire a really powerful double leg that we haven't seen at this point. Scores at the end of period are huge, you know, and I think now with a three-point takedown, they have even even bigger significance as the match goes on because if you don't want to go down, you don't have to go down. Um, but I still think you want to have confidence going down, especially now in, in, in this situation. If you're going to test, can I go down and get away from this guy? This is the place to test that. And we will go scoreless into the second period. After the first period, we are scoreless. Flip goes up. And this could be red for Noto. He's going to go under. Yeah, there was no hesitation. They were like, hey, we're going down right now. We're going. Ramos covers. And we're underway. Looks to break that elbow down now. Scoops that ankle. Now falling back behind around the waist, and Noto is away. So the biggest hit point. One point red. This year also, they're kind of going back to more of a traditional stalling on top, you know? I'm not a big fan of the rule changes. You know, I don't like the idea of saying, hey, we're going to change the rules um, because we want more scoring. Single leg but for Ramos here. Needs to pop his head out. He's close to that, too. A nice leg attack from Ramos. He's doubled off. That's going to be the takedown. Now keep the Turk. So when Three Ramos climb up, down. you want to get in front of his knee. So Noto's doing a good job of keep, keeping his knee and keeping him away. If you can get in front of that knee, now you're securing not only a takedown, but you're in a big back point situation. And now looking head lever breakdown is Matt Ramos trying to flatten Noto. And Noto once again escapes. 3-2. Now the score, 31 One seconds of riding time for Ramos. And we'll see if he fires that single leg again, or if maybe Noto now losing, feels like, hey, I gotta get on my offense a little bit. There's a single leg, head inside shot for Anthony Noto. Maybe looking to come out the back door, attacking far ankles, Matt Ramos now coming out the back door is Noto. Staying on that far ankle is Ramos. What's he need to do to finish, David? Uh, Noto's got to get height here. So get height and now start using his body as a little bit of a shield. Now you want to get your his left arm through the legs and around the body. Because now you don't necessarily need to take down. you got to put him in danger. So here, doing a good job. Around the body. Now get your foot on the ground. Ramos doing a good job. So now Ramos could look to look to leg pass here. But gets his foot Ten on the seconds. ground. Now get your thing about doing a penetration step. Like a knee over toe penetration step. Now Ramos in the position. What a scramble here. What a flurry to end the second period. Yeah. Noto was close. And that's the end of the second period. The score, 3-3. Three, three, and we'll head to the third, 3-2, two. with about a 45-second scramble there, initiated from the Noto single leg. Yeah, I mean, we see those scrambles all the time where we're leaving our trail leg behind. If you can just rotate your knee to the ceiling, keep your foot planted, and then drive your knee over toe like you're doing a, like a knee over toe penetration, like the very first day of wrestling practice. That way you drive weight on your opponent's head and you can start to get their lock, fight their lock, get your takedown. Both guys had an opportunity to get there. Um, you know, both of them did a good job continuing scrambling. But if either one of them finish a little cleaner, they're going to execute that takedown probably. We mentioned the top work of Anthony Noto. Ramos obviously respecting it, choosing to go neutral. And as you mentioned, with the three-point takedown, he doesn't have to go under. He's got the lead right now. So now it's up to Noto to find his way to a point or two. We haven't really seen 
a ton of offense from Noto so far. Um, you know, Ramos obviously had that, you know, both guys have really had one good leg attack. Um, but here, minute, 20 seconds left. See, this is an important thing. I think when you're losing, you got to go, and you got to go now. The longer you wait, the harder it gets. You're running out of opportunities. You want to give yourself a couple. You got two minutes. You want three or four or five leg attack opportunities. If you're just letting yourself have one shot and you don't finish, that's it. You know, now you're waiting until next year, you know, and it's just one minute it's a tough thing. But you got a minute left. Let's see what kind of offense you can create. Level change from Noto trying to create an opening. Nice shot. Same swing single, couldn't get connection this time. 48 seconds to go. Noto needs a takedown. No stall warnings yet. Can't imagine stall calls are gonna play a factor here. He's gonna need to find his way to a takedown. He wants to win this match. Another level change from Noto. Good head hands here from Matt Ramos so far. 30 seconds to go now. 30 seconds remaining. Picking up the pace a little bit is Noto, but Ramos centers up, holding position really well. He's gotta go meow, he's gotta get going. 20 seconds left. You gotta start putting two, three together. This is what you're, you're kind of giving yourself only one chance, one chance, one chance. You gotta be putting one, two, three together. Short offense here. Now looking to roll through, and it's Ramos that catches him on the back, looking for the fall of the last nine seconds here. It was a desperation attempt there from Noto, and Ramos was ready for it, all but has him packed. And I think that's gonna do it. Oh no, four near fall. I thought he put his hand down, but time expired. No pin. What a great match for Ramos, you know, just like, man, couldn't... The winner what by a, a final start count season. of 10 come to 2. Here, you just get the job done. That was awesome. Good job, Matt Ramos. Matt Ramos. Matt Ramos. Um, did some really good things in that match. So it looks like we could have another new number one at 125 pounds. I don't know who it's going to be. But it might not be Anthony Noto anymore after that loss. Great match. Good performance from Matt Ramos. And got to be doing a lot for his confidence getting a win like that as we're seeing this is the, I think the opening takedown here for Matt Ramos. One of two takedowns he was able to get in this match. And when we come back, we're going to have 133 pounds. Sam Latona of Virginia Tech taking on Connor McGonigal from Lehigh. And now introducing our wrestlers at 133. First in the green, a junior from Virginia Tech, Sam Latona. And in the red, a junior from Lehigh, Cutter McGonagall. There you see Lehigh's Connor McGonagall started the year ranked sixth in the country. Crazy situation at Lehigh. They have so much depth at this weight class. You got this guy started at number six. Ryan Crookham pulls the upset of upsets of the year, taking out world champion Vito Arugia, your teammate, David. Yeah, unbelievable. You, you know, it's just, you know, Crookham's had the talent. You know, Crookham's been talented for a long time. He's been injured. You know, kind of gets into that tournament last weekend. He takes out his teammate and then takes out world champion Vito Arugia. But, you know, this is a good chance for McMonigal to kind of get back on track. You know, maybe they're not real sure what they're going to do. Obviously, they've been wrestling both guys, and this is a chance to get a, get a win over a ranked opponent. And the wink, and you kind of, you know, be, let the coach kind of see where he's at. Yeah, and getting a win over a two-time All-American, Sam Latone of Virginia Tech. Good way to keep that competition for the starting spot alive as we are now underway at 133 pounds in the black with green ankle bands. That's Sam Latona. And in the white, red ankle bands, Connor McGonigal. Both guys had busy starts to their season. We've seen Latona in quite a few matches already this year. Had a big win against Rutgers. Dylan Shaver, a great duel at Jersey Mike's Arena. Tone a lot of leg attacks, he can fire. Consistent finishing is a huge key for him. If he can do that, he can beat just about anyone and beat the aforementioned Vito Ruja last year. tona has got a lot of movement so far. McMonagall's kind of just holding his stance, holding center. Um, Latona's doing a good job moving, stance in motion. Look like 
Maybe sometimes you're doing that. Yep, a nice oh, runaround shot, and it's a counter from McGonagall. Look, go behind, then drop down to the single leg. Shin Wizard here from Latona. He's got to beat this Wizard. Tries to get above the knee. That's the first step. Now trying to finish backside and does, and it's a three point take three for points. McGonagall to get this started. Three points red. He just kind of he was waiting. You know, I think Latona was moving around. McGonagall was waiting, and just as they kind of got into that entry, um, he took that shot and ran around. You know, runarounds are, are a huge difference maker in matches. If you want to be successful at a high level, you just can't give up go-behinds. They're just uh, they're momentum killers, and they're easy scores. You know, you give up easy scores at the highest level, uh, you know, it's going to be really hard. If someone's going to score on you, you want to make them work for it. He did a good job recovering and kind of getting back to the wizard, but at that point, you know, you're, uh, you're at a pretty se severe disadvantage. Um, and that was a good job by making McGonagall uh, capitalized and getting that first takedown. And McGonagall, what we didn't get to was he had legs in pretty deep towards the edge, and now he's got a boot in already. Figure four as he's going to work from the top position. Nice and leg now, slip. Yeah, and he slips out. Gives him a little one shove. There's the escape for Latona. Good job underneath three, there. One point. You know, Latona's, he's just got a lot of this movement. He's changing leads. He's kind of... He's just really moving a lot. Sometimes you're doing that because you want to set up your offense. Sometimes you're like, man, I just made weight. My legs aren't feeling quite what I, what I, where I'm feeling, you know? And, and just, you never nearly know, but that first leg attack that he took just looked like it wasn't quite the same pop that you typically see on that leg attack. So, you know, keep in mind, and it's in his movement here. Is he moving because he's setting up his offense, or is he moving because he's trying to get, get warmed up and kind of starting to get himself um, feeling a little bit better? Final 25 seconds of the first period. 3-1 lead for Connor McGonagall of Lehigh. Ear to ear there, not a lot of offense happening from that position as they clear out of it with 12 to go. 10 seconds. Good club from McGonagall as time's gonna run out in the first period. That's the end it's of the McGonagall first period. McGonagall striking first. McGonagall uh, and Red. Re-attack takedown. Latona and Puts green. him on the board. Wow. Flip goes green to Latona, who's going to go under. McGonagall is good on top. You know, just going under here. You've, you've already given up 30 seconds of riding time. You know, McGonagall, he, he's going to have to really have urgency. He looks like he's got a pretty good leg slip, but McGonagall gets these legs and gets them flat. This could be a long period. So that's going to be really the fight here. Now, you had a great leg slip. What's the key to it? Well, you want to keep one, you know, obviously you don't want two legs coming in. When, when a guy throws a leg in, you want, you obviously, guys don't always throw a dominant side in. You want to keep them on one side, and then it's just, you know, obviously it's a, a flexibility, is a technique, but you, typically you want to try and capture something, a wrist, put him on his hip, and then uh, a lot of times you find yourself reversing somebody into a Turk position. And he's doing a pretty good job, so he's doing a good job of keeping one out, and he's got a good feel in there. Escape three, Another one escape point. for Latona makes it three to two. And they're going to say 55 seconds of riding time for McGonagall amassed. So good timing on that escape for, for Sam Latona. Now he's got to try to see if he can get some offense of his own going. And how much is it in the back of your mind? Are you, you fired off a takedown and, and your opponent ends up scoring. What are you thinking in your approach for your next shot? Well, there's really just, there's two mindsets. It's like, all right, I'm going to fire and I'm going to keep firing and figure it out. Or I'm going to really be selective um, and I'm looking for like the perfect leg attack. And I think that comes back to One your practice habits. That's not something like if, you, if you're the guy in practice that feels that situation and you hold back, then you're going to hold back in competition. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, kind of are willing to continue to throw yourself in there in practice, and that's kind of what you're going to do in competition. So um, I would say so far, you know, he's, he's got good action going. Um, but at those half shots against McGonagall, he's going to have a hard time executing getting that takedown. He's going to have to put maybe two setups together and really cover ground. So he's kind of taking these half shots, maybe trying to earn a stall call. 30 seconds. But, and that could you know, obviously play a factor, but I think at some point he's going to have to really cover ground again. And, and you know, it's kind of that risk reward. And there, so he's getting, but those getting shots close. are just kind of like a kneel and a kneel. I think maybe he's kind of, he's maybe trying to mix it up a little bit. And then at some point he's going to go cover ground. So definitely seconds. a little more uh, assertive tone here from Sam Latona. A lot of good motion, level changes, but no connection on a leg attack as they go over, under, towards the edge. As At the, the end of the second period. Second period comes to an end. McGonagall three, Latona two. McGonagall with It's going to be Connor McGonagall's choice. He's going to go underneath. Going to try to build his lead. Yeah, I think at this point, 55 seconds, you know, he's going to cut him right away. But I think you want to ride him for a little bit just to get that riding. Because that riding time is obviously close to a minute. 
Um, Escape red. One you're gonna get. You're gonna need to take down one way or the other. So he's like, G give me two minutes. I feel like I'm wearing on the guy. I'm getting closer, coach. I want two minutes to go get this takedown. A lot more motion from Latona. He's looking better as the match goes on. There we go. So now he's starting to snap. And McGonagall, you know, obviously he's kind of flat-footed. He looks like he's pretty strong, heavy hands. Latona's having a hard time getting through that on those half shots. So at that point, now your snap becomes very effective. You start snapping him, getting him under you, getting him reacting. He comes out of a stance, go get your leg attack. Takes a bad shot, you're running around and reattack. I just, I don't think, there we go, there we go, nice shot. Single so, leg, looking to control that ankle, wants to step over and scoop, pop his head to the outside. Controlling that foot, now looking to maybe pass is McGonagall, nothing yet. Minute 10 to go here, plenty of time for Latona to work for it. He's got it trapped, close to the finish, no three yet. There it is, takedown Sam Latona. He's in the lead by one more, minute but he might have to ride a little bit, or we could see a tie match. And looks to lift and return, looking for a Grammy with McGonagall, there's the escape. Escape red, one point, five, 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 five. Riding time, not a factor. See if Latona pushes for it. So it looks like McGonagall's fatigue starting to wear on him a little bit. If Latona, you, you don't want to take that shot and get ran around, but you want to keep this action going. Whether you get the takedown with 30 seconds left or getting him reacting, going into overtime, keeping that momentum going. That's I think he, he had some success and he started seconds. snapping him. So I think I'd look to, look to Latona get back to his snaps and trying to run to a leg. <laughs> Final 22 seconds of regulation. If we go 5-5, five, five, we'll have two minutes sudden victory overtime. Have to figure the momentum's gonna be on Latona's side if that happens. 10 seconds. Latona looks good, he looks fresh, his movement looks good. He's definitely picking up momentum as his match is going. Body language looks good. Going into overtime, Latona's body language looks really strong, looks confident. That's the end of regulation. So five, at five, five, we're headed to overtime here at 133 pounds. Two minutes for sudden victory now. It's a rule change from last year. Instead of the one minute sudden victory period, you got two minutes. So plenty of time to settle it on their feet. If not, they'll go to the tiebreakers, top, bottom. We'll see if McGonagall initiates any sort of leg attack. Latone's good, doing a good job with his hands. They're not hanging, right? So every time he hangs, McGonagall's looking to tie him up. He's looking to thumb block. Latone's doing a pretty good job of mixing his fakes. His hands are coming up. His hands are coming down. He's keeping him reacting the entire time. He's looking to probably time those things. His hands are coming up, looking to get to that leg attack again. Pawn at the head as McGonagall gave a little fake to try to keep Latona at bay. A minute 20 to go. McGonagall looks like he's like thinking, I, I want to get this to, to top and bottom, right? Mm -hmm. He's looking like, I got a minute left. Maybe look for a run around. It doesn't look like he's super committed to trying to go get a takedown, thinking like, hey, I, I feel like I have the advantage if we get to the mat. So if Latona thinking, I, I got a minute, but he's been pretty confident. He got One the leg slip. Remaining. So we'll see kind of what these guys, what kind of urgency they have here with the minute, minute to go in this period. Have to figure we see at least one attack here from Latona before tiebreakers. If you can set it on your feet, it seems like that's where you probably have the advantage in this match. 43 to go now. Sorry, pick it up. Nice shot. Got his hands coming up. Shot. Got to hide your feet here. Magana goes looking to leg pass. Got to keep that foot under your butt. If he, can get, if he keeps that foot on his butt, it takes away the seconds. potential dangerous in the roll. You want to start using your body as a shield a little bit. Oh, that's tough. snap. And Latona goes down. Knee. We'll see. Shaking his head. And the crowd goes quiet. Dang. All right. So 5-5, five, five, man, it's kind of a scary moment there. Wanted to see how that scramble play out. Not going to because of the potentially dangerous call after McGonagall looked to counter score there. I don't like those positions. Ten those seconds. are tough, especially in an all-star match, you know. It's like, yeah. um, but obviously McGonagall's trying to not get taken down. He's doing the best that he possibly can. Tough position. And so that'll and do it for sudden victory. Still five, and five. Latona... Still limping. It's all up and up, kid. Latona looks back to his corner. Cody Brewer, Jared Hot. 
Latona lines up on that right side, drops down to that ankle. Quick stand up here for Connor McGonagall, looking to lift and return. And trying to return is Latona, drops down to the leg. Now we have a little bit of a scramble here, but the five second count begins and now diving through is, Watch is again. McGonagall. And they, got, they call it potentially dangerous. It's gonna be a stall warning against Latona for dropping down for the five count. That stall's worth it though. I think yeah. you're, you're picking up the 18 seconds of riding time. You're pretty active on your feet. Probably not gonna get hit for stalling if you go back on your feet. You know, and I think you picked it up. You don't wanna give up another stall here, but getting this ride out, you know, it's one of those things, you know, you work on those things in practice. 30 seconds, double overtime. You don't have a stall call. You do have a stall call. And you're utilizing those, those skills and strategies. So they're going to have to change riding time, I believe, because after they get the five-second stall call, they're going to, once they hit him for stalling, the riding time stops, so they're going down. So 16 seconds. So he can't get the full 30 seconds of, of riding time. And now looking for a roll is McGonagall. Plants him, and now looking reversal here. Close to it. Could be backs as well. No, just a reversal. And now close to swipe. Time expires. What a Two flurry points at red the end the there. Seven five McGonagall leads. It's McGonagall 28 seconds seven of riding red. time for Latona five and green. Latona, Latona. He doesn't he doesn't like the call. He doesn't think it was a reversal. I don't think they're gonna like the result of this one. What do you think, David? We saw the exact same situation um, off Latona's takedown where he, he kind of lifted him and McGonagall is definitely not on purpose. He's kind of like spiking his own head and he's trying to grab the near near leg Green and high leg over. On the Earlier he didn't get it, that time did a really good job. As he was going, he was heavy in the front, tacked near leg, hipped over and, and got a reversal. It's definitely something, I, the first time we saw it, I didn't know if it was an awkward yeah. landing, but the second time it's definitely something he, that he's working on and in a period that reversal is gonna be big. Latona kept his hands locked um, for the most part. I, I think you know they don't typically change their mind on the mat. You know they had a pretty good, pretty good look at it. Yeah, to me, it, it, I thought it was, I thought it was a reversal. Latona did a good job avoiding giving up any sort of near fall. It's a savvy, savvy thing um, by McGonagall. I just, it seemed like the momentum was really shifting. Yeah. Latona. And, you know, 12 seconds left. He gets to his feet. And you know, as a coach, you tell your guys, get to your feet. Get to your feet. Good things happen. Got to his feet, um, you know, and was able to kind of utilize the head spike reversal. Yeah, so what are they looking for here to, to determine if it's if it's two? Because obviously Latona still has the leg. That, that's not in dispute. Is it because he put him on his back that they're going to be giving him the reversal? So call stands. It's a reversal. I think you're looking Upon at prior loss of control, stand. looking to making sure that the, the lock was, you know, uh, broken, looking to see like if he had control, right? It's kind of all those things kind of simultaneous. And it's a it's a quick thing. It's nice you can go back and take a look at it, but I just don't think there was enough that was gonna say, hey, you know, you, you kept control. I mean, he was in danger. I think probably the right call. Yeah, so here's the scenario. Latona's gonna go under here. He's down by one, he has a Pretty good riding time advantage, but how good um, is to be determined? Are we going to go neutral here? I think he's going to go neutral. So they're going to go neutral. Um, so with 30 seconds left, and I, you know what? I don't know. I mean, it, it was pretty instant neutral. I saw him look over his coach as neutral, but he's leg slept him two times pretty easily. So I, I do think that if it's a tough decision here, but I, I think that in, Latona taking bottom isn't a terrible decision, but it's obviously McGonagall's best position. So right. but Latona's saying, hey, I want to go neutral. I'm going to get the takedown. We know his knee's a little banged up. So do I feel more comfortable getting this reversal and I have riding time? Or am I going to go on my feet and try and get this takedown sentence send, send into another overtime period? 100%. Yeah, I, I think... Probably going for the takedown and give yourself a full 30 seconds probably makes the most sense, but we'll see. They're, they're double checking riding time, which is now at 17. So he still has the advantage, Latona, but we are going neutral. He'll have 30 seconds for a takedown or McGonagall's gonna win. Underway here, second tiebreaker period. He has some success when he was timing the guy's hands, was timing his hands coming up and following it and on his snap. 
Going head to the leg, trying to find an opening there. They're going to hit McGonagall for stalling. So He's going to dive in there. Really extended now is Latona. Ten, Ten seconds, seconds to go here. Tough position to finish any sort of offense. He's going to try to circle out of bounds and get a restart for one last effort. Five seconds to go here. He's going to need a takedown. He needs it quick. Tries to jump the whistle. Not going to get it. That's a caution. Underway, three seconds. And McGonagall to hold on. 7-5 win for Connor McGonagall of Lehigh. Great back and forth match. And the reversal at the end is Your all the winner way to the by decision, Connor McGonagall. Yeah, it was, uh, definitely that reversal made the big difference. And you know they're going to go back and they're going to think about, man, do I go neutral? Do I go bottom? And those are those situations that you practice. You, you come up with those scenarios of practice, and you kind of know in your head. If I'm down by a takedown, I'm going neutral, and I'm going to mm -hmm. give myself a chance. And he gave himself a chance, but just yeah. wasn't quite able to get it. The NWCA All-Star Classic is brought to you by Dolomer, the official mat of Flow Sports. All Flow Wrestling events, including tonight's, will be wrestled on Dolomer Mat, the undisputed leader in sports surfaces. When we come back, we're going to have Lachlan McNeil of North Carolina taking on Josh Coderhan of Navy. Yeah. Fans, you can see the best high school seniors in the country and the state of Pennsylvania at the Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic. Presented by the U.S. Steel on Saturday, March 30th at And now introducing our wrestlers at 141. A sophomore from North Carolina and currently ranked third in the country, Auckland McNeil. His opponent, a junior from the Naval Academy, Josh Coderhead. All right, set to go here, 141 pounds. Lachlan McNeil, North Carolina. Going to be taking on Josh Coderhead. Coderhead, a, a late replacement, stepped up to the challenge against a very tough Lachlan McNeil here, excited for this one. Coderhan, if you haven't watched him, very exciting style. He can wrestle from everywhere, scrambler good on top. Lachlan, solid as they come. Fourth place last year as we are underway. 141 in the red ankle bands. North Carolina, Lachlan McNeil. He's taking on Josh Coderhan in the blue and gold of the Naval Academy. Lachlan's from Canada, wrestled at Wyoming Seminary. When he goes and wrestles, you know, he's wrestled at age group world championships. He'll go and wrestle for Canada. Um, you know, Tony Ramos will travel with him. You see that a lot. You see a lot of these kids that, you know, have some, the ability to wrestle for other countries. And, and you see, you know, the coaches traveling with them, which is pretty cool. Underhook to that attack. Now, hard wizard down there for Coderhand defending. It looked like he was about to give up the score, but working hard on that defense. Dropping down to the ankle now is Lachlan McNeil. He's in a good position for this finish as he's shelves that foot now looking to finish backside here beats that wizard now up to his feet with a standing single trying to trip and does there's a takedown three points red for Lachlan McNeil jumps out to a quick lead as he slides that boot in right away it's a great start it's a great start to a match now you're looking to flatten him out looks like he's trying to either flatten him out and look for his arm bar if you, you kind of got his elbow in front of his elbow so as you flatten him out Use your elbow to start to scoop his elbow back, and then you start looking for your wing. A little unconventional leg right here. Throwing his leg out, cuts him. 
So escape, escape for Coderhan. 3-1 now the score. Aggressive opening attack there from Lachlan McNeil. There's a two-on-one for Coderhan, cleared out. Minute 20 to go here in the first period. Level changes from Coderhan. Stalking, moving forward, Lachlan McNeil. Coderhan, as Coderhan's moving, you know, he's, he's changing his lead leg a lot. You know, and I think that's something that can really frustrate an opponent. You know, you come, he's coming at you with your right leg One lead, minute. and then he shuffles, his left leg comes forward. Um, so that's something that, you know, for Lachlan, if you can time that, that works out really good. But it can also th throw off your timing if your guy's constantly changing lead leg. So it's something I, I want to keep an eye on as we're moving forward into this match. Over collar for Coderhant clears out of it. 40 seconds to go in the first. Collar and inside control there. When you're a guy that changes your leads up a lot, you know, you, you typically are changing it up and you're looking for a certain look or you have leg attacks that you like on both sides. So maybe if your right leg's forward, you have a high crotch you really like. If your left leg's forward, you have a swing single that you really like. So you, as you're moving, it's getting your motion going, but you're kind of looking. You probably have a leg attack or a position that you like from both sides, and you're trying to see which, which, which position that you can have the most success in. Single Take leg here for Lachlan McNeil, trying to step and scoop that ankle. Locked around the crotch momentarily is Coderhan, improving time. his position is Coderhan, but runs out of time. And that's the end of the first period. The score, McNeil, three in red. Maybe a little Coderhan more time. Do you think he gets that one. takedown? Looked like he was getting there. You know, those, those are big swings and matches. You know, going from a six to one match to a three to one match, um, that was, you kind of see the urgency, right? Coderhan to try and make sure he didn't give up that takedown. Lachlan getting set there. You see that opening takedown. As Lachlan McNeil going to start the second underneath. So often you can see if a guy's going to get away or ride someone within the first 10 seconds. You know, as you can see, if a guy makes a real hard attempt, Coderhan's making a pretty hard attempt here to ride in that first 10 seconds. It looks like he's going to commit to this. Um, but a lot of times in that first 10 seconds, you can really see a guy's demeanor. How, how, how important is it to ride somebody? And gave it a couple tries. And, 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 and on the flip side, for Lachlan, you know, yeah, guy's kind of, he's given that first effort, gives that second effort. If you can kind of work through those two or three efforts to get your escape, and now we're back on our feet. Lachlan's looking to drape over this cradle position. You want to use your knee to start dragging his head. Yep, doing a good job. Now if you can kind of think crotch lift, take him over his straight leg, and now you can start putting yourself into a cradle position. So the attack from Coderhant defended well from Lachlan McNeil. It seemed like as soon as Coderhant got in, Lachlan got on his offense trying to counter score, look for that inside I think, cradle. I think that's something that a lot of wrestlers you, you kind of lose focus of. I mean, you shoot on a leg attack and the guy goes straight defense, that's something to think about. But when you Don't. get on a leg attack and that guy starts attacking you back, you, you definitely think twice about your finish. You're like, man, I don't know, does this, this guy have something here? Even if you don't, just the threat of that, you could see that. Lachlan started draping over top for that cradle position. Coderhan went from finishing to kind of thinking, I'm gonna stalemate this, I feel a little bit in danger. So something to take at home for, for kids that are watching. Your defense can be a very, very strong offense for you as well. 47 seconds to go here in the second period. Lachlan McNeil currently has a three-point lead as he fires off an attack. Sweep single attempt there by Josh Coderhan. Nothing there. This is a big 30 seconds. You know, I think Josh has done a really good job so far. He's had a good seconds. scoring opportunity, didn't finish. But if he can get a score here at the end of this period, it's going to really put him in a good position in, in the third period. On the flip side, if Lachlan could get a takedown here, you really start putting the match out of reach. He's doing a good job running down this underhook. It's a good job squaring up. He was in good posi position with that underhook. Now 10 seconds to go. 10 seconds. He's been close to a couple scores, but just the one takedown so far in this match. And we're going to go to the third period. 4-1 lead for Lachlan Time. McNeil. And at the end of two periods, the score McNeil in red with four. Brings about the end of the second Coderhan period. Coderhan and Green with one. Coderhan going to go underneath. Last McNeil time around, we saw Lachlan McNeil throw in the leg on that right side. We'll see what ride he prefers to, to go for here as we got a little blood time here. It's a little non-traditional ride. He was throwing his, his leg in. It was almost uh, an outside figure four he started with. Then he shifted his leg in. It wasn't really thinking cross-body ride. He was kind of going elbow all the way deep. Maybe maybe he's got something creative in there or just maybe skipping a couple of steps, you know? 
Um, Almost remind me of like a, a, of Dayton Fix's trap arm gut setup. Yeah, where J Dayton will put his fist in the mat and hop to it. Yeah. Where he was, he jumped all the way elbow deep and got a little too overextended and then ended up giving up the escape. So maybe he tries to get back in there, settles back into the position and can jump to that wing. But Coach Kowal, I was just looking over, you know, as in there, he looked pretty confident. We're taking down, we're getting our feet, and he was really emphasizing the hand fight. Maybe they think that they have a, a conditioning advantage. And this is a really nice standing switch. Now nice. we're back on our feet. 4 2 the score. Three, Lachlan McNeil three, in the quarter. lead, but a takedown would put Josh Coderhan up 5 to 4. Plenty of wrestling still to do, plenty of time for Coderhan. He's doing a good job listening to Coach. You know, Coach Kowal looked over, he said, hey, get your hand fight up, get on his head, and he's doing a good job of, of starting to do that. And when he's doing that, Lachlan's stance is getting high. His legs are going straight. So he's starting to get the reaction that he wants. Now it's about, hey, can you time that to get a good leg attack? Level change fake and a shot there from Coderhan, defended by Lachlan McNeil. Minute 25 to go now. They're tied up. Little snap there from McNeil, and they clear out of it. Minute 15 to go now. You know, here when you're chasing, you know, you want to chase and you know you get the takedown, you got a minute left. But when you're just thinking, snap the head, snap the head, you get out, you get high in your stance, the guy sneaks one on you or it gets your leg and now 30 seconds off the clock. So you want to keep one that minute. pace going, but you got to remember your stance is still really important um, when you're on the hunt like that. And Lachlan, when your guy's kind of coming after you, you can find really good openings to extend your lead. I'm trying to use that underhook again was Lachlan McNeil, but Codahan able to clear out of it, fires off a shot, but nothing doing. 40 seconds to go as Lachlan goes back to that underhook on the right side now. Two on one, cleared. And there's a low level shot. Now attacking the other leg and looking maybe seconds. to scramble a little bit is Lachlan McNeil, and he may be in a decent position here. Who's in a position of advantage, David? Uh, I would say Lachlan right now, but if, if, if you got to get shoulder in, get, get shoulder in the thigh, and this is kind of your chance, so now you want to get up. Now you want to get elevation. You want to get up, and you want to start hiding your feet, trying to get your hand back to a cross-face position. Now we're in Ten a seconds. Ten seconds to go. This could be the match. coderhan has got to finish this if he wants to win. Lachlan McNeil looks like he's improving his position. And that's how this one's going to end. Fun flurry to bring it home. But UNC's Lachlan McNeil, the winner, 4-2. to two. Did a really good job kind of attacking what I like to call a switch cradle position and then turning that defense into his offense. Did that twice in that match on deep shots by Coderhan. Turning Your that offense into his offense. Turned that defense into his offense. Still made the first one. That one he put himself in a good situation to face out the match in a takedown position. So congrats to Lachlan McNeil and the UNC staff. Take a look at some of these attacks. It's that first takedown that Lachlan was able to get. Long extended scramble before he got that single leg and trip. Josh Coderhan was certainly game, but a good, good game plan from Lachlan McNeil executed. As Coach Cole Tar Heel is going to go home a winner. And when we come back, we're going to have 149 pounds. First Penn State wrestler of the night, Shane Van Ness versus number three, Kyle Parco. All right, fans, we are halfway through our event tonight. I think it's time to give away some t-shirts. What do you say? We've got some free t-shirts to give away. You want a t-shirt? Get crazy, get loud.
Always great to be back here at Rec Hall. Always great to get some delicious roasted peanuts. That's the sweet smell. If you're here in Rec Hall right now, you're probably not listening to this, but you can smell the deliciousness. And we're ready to go here at 149 pounds. And now, introducing our wrestlers at 149. In the green, a sophomore from Penn State, currently ranked number two, His opponent in the red, a junior from Arizona State, currently ranked third in the country, Kyle Parco. And they got loud for the hometown wrestler, Shane Van Ness. Cannot wait for this one. A rematch of the third place match, Van Ness a 7-2 winner. What stands out to you about Shane Van Ness, David? Shane just has a relentless attacking style. He just he just puts himself in wrestling situations. He moves forward. He has this strength and he's got good conditioning. And he just keeps wrestling. Last year, you know, as a freshman, he kind of took a little bit of lumps early in the season, just built as the season went on at the national tournament. He had a great tournament. You know, Kyle Parco, Arizona State, great athlete. One of his best things, he gets to his underhook. He's got a really good underhook offense. You know, these guys wrestled for third place last year. Um, both guys finishing their season, you know, in that third place match. I feel like when you get guys that are wrestling for that third place match, you know, no one wants to go home with fourth place, but it's a good indication. I was right there. I was right there with the best guys in the country, and it's a good thing to build off of. So I think both guys probably thinking about this year national championship aspirations, and now we're getting started right away kind of where we picked up last year. Hard leg attack there from Parco. Van Ness able to step out of it. First opening attack here. And you mentioned the pace of Shane Van Ness. He is absolutely relentless, but Kyle Parco is slick as they come at this weight class. Uh, a weight class that lost the four-time NCAA champion, Yan Yanni Diakamahalas. Ridge Lovett sits on top of the rankings, but you, you know these two guys have their eye on that national title. And already you can kind of see Shane just kind of that moving forward, you know, just like it doesn't, it's, 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 it doesn't really seem like it's a super fast pace, but it just wears on you. He's just moving forward, moving forward. And already Kyle's doing a good job of getting his underhook. He's got there on both sides of the body so far, um, probably a way he thinks maybe going to slow him down a little bit, but also he generates some really good offense from there. So right away, the two kind of key areas that I was looking forward to, both guys are executing their game plan so far, a minute and a half in. Van Ness from New Jersey, Parco from California, a transfer from Fresno State, had a great career at both programs in his final year for the Sun Devils. And looking to attack on the edge there is Parco, but squaring up is Van Ness as they're towards the edge and don't quite go out of bounds. They're letting them wrestle here on the edge. There they go out, minute five to go here in the first period. Action call on the edge, no stalling. We're already two minutes in, and Shane's taken six or seven shots. You know, it's like I said, it doesn't, it's not a pace that you're like, man, it's like not a crazy action, but he's just on you constantly. And, and Kyle's done a good job so far of kind of weathering that. Um, doing a good, They both did a good job One on the minute. edge, not being pushed out of bounds, circling back in. The referees want you to wrestle there. They just don't want you to stop wrestling back out of bounds. So they want to let you wrestle there. Um, and I think it's good that referees are patient and kind of let, this, let, let the wrestling happen versus getting engaged really early in matches. I just don't like right off the bat, there's a first action out of bounds and the stall warning goes up. I like to kind of see how guys are wrestling and then maybe kind of dictate that as the match goes on a little bit. Parko's got to his underhook a couple times but not able to generate any offense at this point from that seconds. position. Back to it once more, trying to stand up Van Ness and fire the takedown. Double leg looking to throw it by is Parko. And Parko's really solid upper body in general. Van Ness has to be careful in his approach there. He's done a really good job neutralizing Shane's shots, those underhooks. He's catching them with underhooks right, left, pulling them up, and then just, again, it's a way that 10, 15, 10 seconds. 20 seconds off the clock. 10, 15, 20 seconds off the clock. But it's been a very fast-paced first period. Although there's no scoring on the board, very fast-paced first period. Totally agree. Scoreless That's after one. We'll go to the flip. The score remains zero. It's going to be green for Van Ness. 
And they're going to go underneath. Try to get that first point of the match. Parco lines up on that left side. And underway looks to chop at that left arm of Van Ness. Van Ness tripoding up. Trying to scoop that ankle. And now switching sides, doing a good job sealing off there. Shane Van Ness, this he cuts Cruz for one. One point. Takes the lead 1-0, minute 42. Only 13 seconds of riding time for Parco. As we see another shot from Van Ness. And another shot, re-attack attempt there from Parco. Not there though. Back to that underhook. As the match goes on, you know, I think this underhook is going to be a big factor. It's, it's, it's slowing, it's definitely, it's slowing Shane down. It's also putting, putting Kyle in his offensive positions. Um, and Shane doing a good job of getting his offense going, but not following it up after that. So I feel like so far, I really feel like both guys are implementing the game plans that they want to do. It's about now cleaning it up. As we get later in the match, is, you know, how, how's Kyle going to utilize that underhook to a score? You know, how's Shane going to make that adjustment on those entries, keeping his elbows in or following it up with the second leg attack? And I would, you know, I think with the minute left here, maybe you know, we get this little break, both coaches are going to start making some adjustments with their athletes. Um, and how can we get us take down here with the, with the minute left and, and put ourselves in, in a pretty good situation going into the third period? Blood time for Van Ness out of the nose. They're going to clean that up. Frank Molinaro, Penn State legend, you know, coaching now at Arizona State in, in Kyle Parco's corner here. Frank won a lot of big matches at Penn State, national champion, um, just a relentless wrestler. Very, very good strategic wrestler, great game plan. Um, it's weird seeing him in different colors. I'm just so used to seeing him in, in the blue and white, you know, and spending so much time with him. But he's making a big impact at Arizona State. Definitely an adjustment out at Arizona State. He, like you, an Olympian, as well as a national champion for Penn State. As Van Ness has cleaned up, a minute seven to go. And we're underway in the second period. Still just 1-0. And now Parko finds his way to a single leg. One minute. Trying the, to work for the finish. Again, so off the underhook, he fired a shot. That's the first real shot he's fired off that. And now Shane, kind of we talked about with Lachlan, he's turning that, that defense into his offense. He started to look for his uh, cradle position. Now he's got him extended. If he can slide away, heavy hips, break his lock. Like very first day of wrestling. Now looking for your reattack. Although there wasn't a score there from either guy, great wrestling. That's great wrestling. You know, it's going to take one or two more of those, I would think, attempts from either guy to probably break through and get this first takedown. Yeah, felt like both guys had an opportunity to score out of that exchange. Parko on the attack, Van Ness on the counter. 22 seconds and now finds his way to the left, tries to throw it by again, and Parko's close, but no, looking to run behind. Upper body now. What's it going to be? It's on his back. Van Ness throws him. He's going to get the takedown, and he swipes. No. Just the takedown three for Shane Van Ness. What a scramble. What a scramble. And Parko really sent it there. He fell into the center. There was a four there on the body. And Van Ness is able to kind of pressure in, puts him down. And Parko did a good job not giving up any near fall there because it was tight. I just think that's, you know, for Shane, that was a little bit of an attrition score. Like, it wasn't really clean. It wasn't really fundamental. But just they, they wear on you. And actually, Parko actually threw him by with the underhook. Shane ripped his elbow back in, squared up with him into a whizzer. They got into a step round position. And then both guys kind of in that 50-50, and Shane ended up on top. But it doesn't really change much for Parko, although the, the adrenaline, like you got to kind of dial him back in. But it's still escaping a takedown, ties it back up. So with the three-point takedowns, it's a thing that you have to get used to because a four-point uh, deficit is not what it was before. Right. It's still escaping takedown. And I think it's going to take these guys a little bit of time to understand that in your mind. From Coach, Coach Molinaro saying, hey, it's the same thing. It's escape and a takedown. But until you're in it for the first time, you, to realize, well, I'm not that far out of it. It's going to take a little time. And uh, right off the bat, Shane's done a really good job of committing to this ride. Yeah, no easy escape coming for Kyle Parco. Van Ness committed to this ride. He's got 28 seconds of riding time and a 4-0 lead to his credit. Last year, the national tournament, Shane had some wild matches, and his mat wrestling was made a big difference for him later. You know, in those tournaments, riding, getting turns, and we talked earlier about you can tell in the first 10 seconds of every whistle start who's probably going to get the escape and who's going to get away. And Shane's done a really good job in the first 10 seconds of not only dictating the ride but breaking the guy down. Now he's in turf a turn and he's in a turning situation. Now he's attacking the armbar. 
this is you know what you want to see when you have that lead and you keep wrestling. He's looking to turn him and build his lead. You know, obviously that fast pace I think is really starting to One wear. One minute. And just got riding time. So he's got that arm bar on that left side. He's done a great job. A couple attempts for Parco to get away. He's solid returns. Now he's got that figure four ride, leg in, has the arm bar. Parco's a long way from escape, it appears. 42 seconds to go, riding time at a minute 20, so a potential extra point coming for Shane Van Ness as he stymies Parco once more. Another return, David. Yeah, Shane's, you know, he's starting to kind of feel that you're at that mentality where, yeah, I have this lead, but I don't want to give up anything, so I'm going to wrestle this guy later. Ooh. And now Kyle's looking at kind of the same thing, gets the escape, so now he's going to need escape more than just a takedown here. Point. With 15 seconds left. Riding time's locked, effectively a 5 1 lead for Shane Van Ness. 17 to go. Parco's got to think something big here. Van Ness can hold position. Now he's going to fire, trying to build it again, trying to roll him through as Kyle Parco able to stay on the single leg as Shane Van Ness now draping around, Five locking seconds. around the crotch is Parco, but it looks like that's how it's going to end. Shane Van Ness, a 5 1 winner. Red calls getting to their feet. You know, they can really appreciate the good wrestling here um, that they just saw from, from the sophomore. Your winner by decision, 5-1, from the Indian Lions, Shane Van Nuss. How good does it feel to get a high five from the big man after, after a win like that? Oh, I mean, getting get a high five after a win in Rec Hall, there's no better feeling. And this is this is the exchange really here that made a big difference. And, you know, that's this is a position that I personally don't really have a good feel in. But guys that have a good feel upper body, it's a massive advantage. And Shane just looks so calm there. And it was really just the ability of just staying calm. Kyle kind of went to send it, got the takedown, and then that hard ride in the third period. But it was all the takedowns early, all the leg attacks or lack of takedowns, but leg attacks, I think, opened up those scores. 157 pounds when we come back. Nick Novak versus Nolan Hurdle. That was awesome. All right, there you're looking live at the Nittany Lion Shrine. A little rain, not gonna stop us from having an awesome event here as we're ready for 157 pounds. Introducing our wrestlers at 157. First in the green, a senior from Wisconsin Lacrosse and current co-number one, Nolan Hurdle! And his opponent in red, a junior from St. Cloud and also current co-number one, Nick Novak. Pretty cool thing here at 157 pounds. Initially it was gonna be Ja'Cory Teamer versus Levi Haynes. That match fell through and we said, hey, let's have a D2 champ versus a D3 champ. That's what we're gonna have here, Nick Novak. The reigning Division II national champion, 157 pounds, taking on Nolan Hurdle, the D3 champ from UW Lacrosse. Excited to showcase these D2 and D3 athletes. And we are underway in the black and red. That's Nick Novak. And in the silver and maroon, Nolan Hurdle. Got a super match here. That's right. What a great opportunity for these guys. You know, a, a little bit last minute, right? You step in last minute, but sometimes that's a way that you can you can kind of get your name on the map. You know, you see that in MMA all the time. You know, mm -hmm. maybe guy something falls through, a guy steps in, gets a great victory, and now boom, their name kind of jumps to the front front of the lead. And and tonight for these guys, right? They get a wrestle in front of this six thousand six thousand person sold out arena rec hall, and it's a great opportunity to just go let it rip, go let it rip, have some fun, score some points, and set the tone as your season's just beginning. 
Certainly nothing to lose tonight for these two athletes and excited that they stepped up, as you mentioned, on short notice. As we're 50 seconds into the first period, no score yet. Head taps and pops from Hurdle. Now an underhook attempt there from Novak, cleared out by Hurdle. Novak looks to kind of have a little bit of the, I would say, the strength advantage so far, a little bit more power with the underhook moving forward. I'm interested to see what kind of offense that he's looking to generate with that right-hand underhook. Is he looking to snap him down? Is he looking to run through a knee pick, maybe Hydley style? Um, you know, what's he looking for? And, uh, you know, for Hurdle so far, maybe just kind of feeling him out. Uh, a little taller, a little longer, a little lankier. Um, we haven't really seen much offense so far from either of these guys outside of you know these underhook attempts so far from Novak. Underhook of the left side, no posi head position there for, for Hurdle. He gets his hips in there and now tries to throw it by. We talked earlier when the women were wrestling, we were talking about the underhook and how, how valuable it is in freestyle, but we've seen a lot of underhooks so far in folk style. In every match so far, I think the underhook has been has been a, a relevant situation. You know, it's something that I think is really starting to come back. You know, obviously internationally One we minute. see the Iranians and the Russians have had a lot of success with the underhooks. You know, as Americans, we've had to really adjust to that style. But if you're watching wrestling, you can see, man, underhooks are very, if you're working at the highest level, it's going to work all the way down, you know. And, and today we're seeing a lot of underhooks. And I think it's a trend we're going to see a lot more underhooks in wrestling, youth, middle school, high school, um, you know, as, the, as moves start to kind of like go in circles. And it seems to be that's a, an attack that's Single leg for Hurdle. Back in. Drops down. Now trying to roll through and does is no back. Now he may be in position to score and see if he can get some height there. Right now, a little extended, and it's Hurdle locked around the crotch. Now grabbing the ankle. So far tonight, um, across the board, the wrestlers have missed so many scoring opportunities in this position. And sometimes you get in there and you're just thinking, I gotta finish, and you're kind of squeezing, you're flexing, and you're trying to navigate. The best thing you can do is just get the guy's feet off the ground. Typically in those scrambles, if your feet are on the ground, you have a good opportunity. If your feet are off the ground, one foot or two foot, you're losing some advantage. Now, difference between freestyle and folk style, feet off the ground, you gotta hide your feet because they're gonna be rediving. You know, we've seen an injury tonight, we've seen prolonged scrambles. So it's an area that every practice, you gotta spend time, guys draping over, but just getting the feet up, hiding your feet, having this element of patience, but also urgency, using your body um, and getting those takedowns. I mean, every match, we've seen that come into play. Back underway, the officials wanted to look at something, no change. 10 seconds to go here in the first period, no score yet. And that's gonna do it. Period number one, scoreless. At the end of the first we'll go period, to the, mat. the scores zero. Green deferred by Hurdle. Novak gonna go under. Double thigh pry off the whistle for Hurdle. Trying to get some forward pressure. Trying to build now. Up to his feet is Novak, but a little broomstick finish there. Puts him back down on the mat. Now rolling around is Novak trying to look for a reversal or an escape, but it, Hurdle doing a good job following. Hurdle did a really good job the entire red. time. And you see that a lot with the wrestlers. You know, you get in that kind of like mat return situation, you get excited and you go cross face. Anytime you're in a scramble, you always reset by going underneath the guy's arms, right? That's how you get your takedown. That's how you can kind of recontrol somebody. You get in those scrambles, you know, you get over top of the arm. That, now the guy can get his arm through and get across your body, square up with you, and that's where he lost it. But he did a good job. You know, it was the first time we've seen that little broomstick mat return. He looked like his leg in was a good position. Um, but those are moments. Those are 30 seconds more riding time, minute One more minutes. riding time, or a guy gets an escape and back on top. So resetting in scrambles, getting your arms, getting your arms under his armpits gives you a chance to reset mentally and obviously get back in a better riding position. 48 to go. Just a one-point differential here. Novak with the lead with that escape. But Hurdle will have choice in the third period. As he goes to that collar tie, trying to get some offense going. He fired the only attack from neutral, but it was countered 30 seconds. by Novak, unable to get that finish. I think Hurdle is going to have the, you know, the advantage on the mat. So 
I feel like he's gonna, it just seems to me so far, usually if you're good on top and you're kind of wiry, good legs in, you're probably probably pretty good on the mat, probably similar. So I feel like he's gonna feel pretty confident going down, maybe looking for a reversal, you know, maybe looking Ten for a seconds. reversal rather than escape um, and maybe changing up the momentum here. Shot, reshot there between Novak and Hurdle as the second period comes to an end. Time. We'll go to the third. That's the end of the second period. The score, choice. Novak in red He's going to go bottom without Hurdle any hesitation green, at all. Zero. Opportunity to tie the match up or take the lead. And we are underway in the third period. Claw now leg in here for, for Novak. Looks like two legs in, actually. So he's reaching under the chin, grabbing that near arm. Now standing. So I'm pretty sure when you throw legs in and that guy stands up, it's your responsibility on top to return him, which is kind of mm. weird. Because they stood up. You know, the bottom guy stood up, but um, escape green, did a good one job get, getting the escape. We are all square. Riding time zeroed, 1-1 one, one on the scoreboard. Takedown probably going to do it here. Now this is kind of like where you just got to build up a little bit of courage. You know, you got to bite down your mouthpiece and you got to go get this takedown. You know, you don't want to send it in overtime. Don't want to go in a double overtime. You got a minute. You know, you prepare, you know, you prepare for a seven minute match. You prepare your conditioning. You practice these scenarios all the time. You know, this is where you just, one guy one is going to have to have a little more courage. They're going to have to find a way to go get this takedown. Doesn't have to be pretty. Probably isn't going to be pretty. Um, get your hands locked. Build up. Snap. Run around him. Um, the simple fundamentals are, are going to always win. Double leg from Novak. Double to single now. Right-handed single leg. Hurdle doing a good job stuffing the head for a moment. And it looks like he's lost the leg now as Novak. 37 seconds to go. As he comes up with an underhook on the edge. And Hurdle does a good job circling back in with 30 to go 30 now. seconds. Collar and ankle there, not there for Novak. Both guys kind of originating their offense from the underhook. You know, both guys kind of have so far. 10 seconds. Ten to nice go. high nice. crotch. Up, feet off the ground, feet off the ground. Hide your feet, a little bit more urgency. And just going to run out of time there. Double ankle scramble from Hurdle. At the end of regulation, the our score, Novak go in red, one Good Hurdle shot there by Novak, green, but not enough one. time. And as you mentioned, got to hide your feet there. So we'll go to another overtime match here. Any point wins it. Now underhook to that single leg attempt for Hurdle. It's not there. A minute 35 to go in sudden victory. Same single leg here for Novak. Look to try and crack him on his hip. Or now that your head's under and his knee's bent, now you want to get your head up. You want to kind of do a knee slide, get your head up, get his feet off the ground. Or you want to put him on his hip and start looking to hook his ankle. And it looks like he's kind of stuck in the middle. Got to make a decision here. Now he's climbing above his knee. Hurdle looks pretty comfortable when, when Novak's on his legs. That's the second or third time he's been in, and he doesn't look threatened at all. Minute seven now in sudden victory. High single leg there from Hurdle, but Novak able to step away from it. One underhook to a high single leg. This is a good opportunity here, looking to trip. Rolling under. Did he find the ankle? Yes, he did. Novak. Able to avoid the takedown for the time being. Watch that knee. knee in a bad spot, and the ref spots it. They call it potentially dangerous. This is a good time. Either guy here, a whistle start, right? Both guys here, a good whistle start shout here would make would really go a long way. We kind of saw Hurdle do it the last time, but you, you get in those flurries. You got a couple flurries one way or the other. Kind of both, kind of kind of refocus. Shot on the whistle can be really really valuable. You get to that standing single position, David. What what is the challenge? How hard is it to hide your ankles? Because you know seconds. Novak's diving under every time you get standing. Uh, it's drilling habits, honestly, more than anything else. You know, you get in there. Most guys get the leg attack. Their heads up in the air. They're tripping. When you know someone's diving, you got to have your head like a bull. Your head's got to be in the ribs, ready as they're going. Your head's diving. Your knees are coming down. You're sprawling. Single leg there for Novak, trying to grab the ankle there and circle behind his hurdle. 
But Novak pretty strong there on the leg. Looks like he'll be able to stalemate this position as time's gonna run out. We're gonna head to the mat here. We're gonna go tiebreakers for the second time tonight. I think Hurdle's got the advantage on the mat so far. We, we haven't seen a lot so far, but I just, I feel that it's gonna favor him uh, a little bit more here. Hurdle's choice, he's gonna go underneath after Novak defers. And there we go. Whistle start and up to his feet immediately is Hurdle. Trying to fight those hands. Now looking to lift. Good lift and return there by Novak. Goes to that claw right on the left side. Then slips in two legs. 15 seconds to go. Hurdle not too much closer to an escape. This is a tough spot as the ref was counting on a seconds. stall for grabbing the ankle. Eight seconds to go. And Novak looking close to getting that right out. And he's going to get it. Yeah. Great ride from Novak there. He really committed. We didn't really see that commitment earlier in the match. But there, you know, hey, Matt's on the line. He really, got, really made a decision. Big mat return, double legs in, flatten the guy out. It's a good job. Now you just you got 29 seconds to get an escape here and you win. Yeah, 29 seconds. I would think Hurdle's gonna throw his leg back in, look to sit him down. You know, obviously no stalling calls. You've gotta stay under the arms. You know, you don't want to come over top of the arms. You know you just gotta ride him for 30 seconds under the arms. One or two maybe mat returns. And up to his feet right away is Novak looking to roll and roll he does, but kind of lands in a crab ride, but not stopping there is Novak trying to come up to his feet and does quad potting. Good job, Grabbing Hurdle. that leg. Moving forward, he can sit him back down here. Now when he sits him down, you gotta make sure you stay under the arms this time. Did a good job. A little bit high, 10 seconds 10 left. Seconds. You're not thinking cradle, you're not thinking turn, you're just thinking, man, I gotta center this guy's arms. Another Matt return, he's gonna Granby. Close, but no cigar. We're going to go back to sudden victory. That was a good adjustment from earlier in the match when he was grambling or getting those scrambles, and he did a good job staying patient. Now at this point, you're just kind of digging deep. Both guys are tired. There's really no conditioning advantage at this point. It's like, you know, you just got to find a way to win. You got to want it. You got to just want to get the takedown a little more than the other guy. You see them both kind of break their position there, stand up, take it. Take a breath. Is this a uh, one minute? We haven't done a minute 20, have we? No, it's one minute. So the second sudden victory, just a minute. And now 30 single seconds. leg there. And now far ankle there for Hurdle, trying to circle and maybe look for a danger. But Novak's been able to get to that leg and just kind of hold on. And now he's in maybe a little position for the finish. Nothing yet. No. Got to keep your hands Ten locked seconds. here. Ten seconds left. Can't give up the goal behind. Got to keep your hands locked. Back to the mat we go. It's going to be Hurdle's choice. What's he going to do? They both ridden each other. He's going to go under. I think Novak obviously really, really made up his mind the last time. We'll see if he makes up that mind again. Stand up for Hurdle. Leg in. Now he goes broomstick. Now he's sliding Trying down. Slide. He's slip. in good position for that reversal. He's going to get it. Two for Hurdle. He's up three to Two one now. For three. Very likely going to be the difference here. Second. As Novak. Kind of put his head on the mat after he gave up that reversal. And rides him out. So Novak going to go neutral. He needs to get a takedown. This is twice so far we've seen in these double overtime situations instead of going bottom. Uh, really respecting top guys wrestling and uh, going up on your feet. Underhook for Hurdle. It looked like Novak was trying to initiate a double over kind of throw situation. Hurdle really just needs to play defense here, and he can walk away a winner here. You know, as a coach, you know, it's something that's it's tough. You're like, you, you don't need to throw the guy. You don't need to be walk, going up top and thinking double over and hook. You know, it's, it's going to be your leg attacks. It's going to be two or three in a row, you know. Um, but you know, it's a good learning experience. And uh, Hurdle just really dug deep, kind of felt like he had the advantage on the mat, and ultimately that was a difference maker for him. But 
Really, really proud of these guys stepping up short. Your winner by a 3-1 decision really from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Nolan Hurdle. Take a look at that reversal, the biggest scoring sequence of the match. No takedowns. Both guys got to legs, couldn't finish, but it was this so, reversal here As he gets from sit down, he does a good job. He isolates, he slides down like a baseball slide. Slides down baseball slide, and now he gets his hips up and, and, and gets a nice reversal. You know, really good fundamental leg slip. And now with a difference maker, we kind of talked about it earlier, you know, Hurdle was pretty good on top of the legs, and I kind of felt that as it got later in the match, he would probably be able to pretty comfortable there, and that, that was a difference maker. Top That's wrestling exactly makes right. a big difference. Matt wrestling makes a big difference. Coming up next, we're going to have 165 pounds, Dean Hamidi versus Isaac Oleznik. Coming up. And now introducing our contestants at 165. Wearing green, a senior from Oklahoma State, Isaac Oleznik. And in red, a junior from Wisconsin, Dean Hamidi. There you see Dean Hamidi making his way to the mat. One of the more exciting wrestlers in college wrestling. High attack rate, good from top. A lot of leg attacks, good re-attacks. What impresses you about Hamidi? I mean, D Dean is kind of like the the guy that I think of that just lets it rip. Like, I mean, he's a great scrambler. He's got the cover ground. He's tough on top. He's always looking to score. He's entertaining. You know, um, he's one of my favorite wrestlers to watch in college wrestling right now. Meanwhile, Isaac Oleznik, a transfer from NIU to Oklahoma State. Great from the top position, really good in the scrambles. Was a bit of a surprise All-American when he upset Carson Harshler of Ohio State in the round of 12. Did so with a really tough ride. We'll see if the map plays a factor. A little history here, but it's been on Dean Hamidi's side so far. You know, when Dean gets on top, like I mean, he works hard on top. He's got a really good cradle. Um, he, he does like has a nice little pick on his feet um, that he kind of utilizes, and he's got a really good, really good feel when he scrambles. You know, when guys get to his leg. I mean, you're gonna see him. Here we go. Nice That's where that cover ground shot. Single leg. Now he's got a battle with the edge unless he can pull him back in. Wizard there from Oleznik. So the important thing is here is you're pulling him back in, you've got to hide your feet. So you're using his head, right? His head's kind of in position, always looking, looking for the guy to look to change levels, try to dive under, looking to catch the guy, stepping backside. You want to get back up to your feet again or look to throw a leg in here on the edge if you can. Oleznik picks the leg. Now he may be in consideration for the score, but no, it's Hamidi now, Wizard's seatbelt. Had the takedown, just kind of went around his waist, and now we're back in that same position again. If you can kind of pull him back in. Yeah, going around the waist is such a, it's a natural movement, but it, it can stop a lot of takedowns. Yeah, I mean, those positions are something you gotta drill repetitions. You know, you, guy limps out of it, you're back under the leg, you know, or under the butt. Guy limps out of it, you're back. You wanna be above the knee, but under the butt. You start going to the waist, you gotta start trying to readjust and getting back under the butt again. But, um, you know, obviously those are, is it going to make the difference in the match? Maybe Dean's kind of one of those guys that creates a lot of opportunities. Here's, so I'm here's another opportunity. Single leg standing once again on the edge. Minute five and now Oleznik does a good job bringing his foot down and he just picks that leg right up, puts it, one shelves minute. that leg. Hard wizard again from Oleznik trying to limp out of that is Hamidi, but they're completely out of bounds now. But a lot of attacks so far. There's no points yet. Lesnick's really good in this wizard position. You know, it's not a position you really want to be good in because that means guys are on your leg all the time, but he's obviously really savvy there, very comfortable. Um, you know, obviously it's a tough place to live all the time, but he's, he's saved three takedowns on the edge now by just not stop wrestling and obviously being very comfortable there. 37 to go here in the first period. 30 seconds. Some fakes from Lesnick. He's taking a little bit of ground now. Another single leg. There's a stall warning stall against warning the Legend. Well earned. 
by Dean Hamidi. Now he's on a single leg once more. Probably going to try to get above that knee. Another hard shin whizzer on the edge from Isaac Oleznik. 12 seconds to go. And they go off the mat out of bounds. 11 seconds. It's been four really high quality attacks from Hamidi, but no points yet. You know, that's one of the seconds. biggest differences in freestyle. You get to those positions, and, and, and a lot of times in college, one thing that I think that sets us back a little bit in freestyle is we learn in folk style to evade takedowns by going out of bounds. Yeah. Evade takedowns by going splits or going blizzard. In freestyle, you stand the guy up and take him out of bounds, and you're rewarded for that. In folk style, it's the opposite. you got to get there. you got to drag the guy back in bounds. That's the one situation that it's a massive difference between folk style and freestyle. But to be effective in folk style, you have to finish on the edge. You have to learn how to finish when guys are wizarding you because it's going to be the number one defense on the edge. They're going to ground themselves. They're going to wizard. They're going to try and get out of bounds. Hamidi going to start the second underneath. This is a position where Oleznik has to think, maybe this, this could be my opportunity, this could be my chance. But right now it's Hamidi up to his feet and away Escape in just 16 red. seconds. Good job, and he fires again. 1-0 lead for Dean Hamidi. Underhook on that right side, cleared out by Hamidi. And look for a pass, but it's a re-attack from Hamidi. Now he's behind the knee with his head. Back on the Same waist wizard again. though. And Hamidi's making life really hard on himself by going to the wizard every single time. I mean, he's doing a good job of getting the leg attack, he's doing a good job of falling to the re-attack. But on these finishes, he's coming up, come up around the waist, and now, I mean, that's four or five takedowns that maybe we're missing out on. And Oleznik's doing a good job of just staying patient and just pulling him up. Staying patient and pulling him up. And now it's his oh, leg, it's like a nice ankle pick. Really beautiful leg attack. Good, Take really down, time. Dean green, looked like Dean was kind of getting a little impatient. Points. Now he's got this figure four truck. This is nasty. So you want to keep this. Now you want to attack his head. So you can lock your hands. As long as you lock your hands below the shoulder, above the elbow, you can turn his face. But you want to get aggressive here. One really minute. try and get back points. This is a match ender. You're going to get the guy on his back. You're going to get back points. But you're going to have to keep walking it, stay patient. Get under. Now, now you turn his chin. Now you get under. Now turn his chin. Now you get back points. There you go. Yep. Keep Close. walking it. No count yet, but it was nearly there. So now you want to readjust. You want to grab his like a football. So take his right hand, lift his head right, right above the right, right above his forehead. Lift his head, readjust like you're carrying a football, and now you lift your elbow. But you don't want to go here. You want to go back to the Turk for sure. Get back to the Turk. Thirty to execute seconds. This finish. Got to have a little more urgency. At this point, now it's stalling. You know, at this point, if you're not turning him, if you have the knee there, it's stalling. That's a, you know that's a, that's a you know, that's Dean did a good job of getting tough, not giving up points there. But that's a that's a big miss by Oleznik by not capitalizing. Um, that's a match ender. You go up seven to one with you know two minutes left. But now Dean's right back in the match. Huge takedown there for Oleznik. Just kind of caught him walking in and picked the ankle, got the takedown, and great job transitioning to the near turn. He's got a minute twenty of riding time Ten now. Seconds. As committee trying to work it out of it, but dropping to the leg and driving him out of bounds. Six seconds to go here. Right out here is huge for a legend. Well, yeah, I mean, just as he was working for that turn, I mean, it's just crazy because, you know, the, the momentum and the excitement, but he's going to have a minute and 30 seconds of riding time. Tripod here from Hamidi. But Oleznik going to stay behind those arms and get the ride out. At the end of the second period, take a look this at this score, Hamidi in red one, Oleznik in green three. a really good job three. of timing that. You know, Dean was all over him. Four, five, six leg attacks, and Oleznik defended, 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 then boom, nice timing, nice little low ankle. Um, so close to capitalizing on back points, but has a minute and a half riding time, and he's down. So effectively, you know, you're talking about, you know, you're four to one, skate five to one. Um, Dean is really good on top, so my guess is he's going to work here to turn him. He's got a nice leg in, draping cradle um, that I, 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 and coach is saying cut him. So that's not going to really give himself a chance to turn him. He's going to have to execute. So big thing to look at here. Green, Dean getting the leg attacks, point. staying below the, below the butt, above the knee on his finishes. Can Oleznik continue to fight off these wizards? We're going to be there again. Finger fight there from Oleznik. Doing anything he can to slow down Hamidi. Oleznik does have a stall call, so, you know, pick up the action, get a stall call. It's effectively five to, you know, four to two, take down right out. You know, we're, this is going to come down to the wire. There's a shot again from Hamidi. They're going to hit him right here, boom. Shot, single leg, Hamidi in deep, but once again on the edge, but able to limp arm, but no, switches to the other side. Good job by Oleznik, just staying square. Not going to give up the goal behind here. Minute 14 to go. He's got a cradle. He's Near got a cradle. Side cradle potentially locked up, but can he stuck. set him on his hip? I don't know. He's going to maybe readjust, get his knee 
but you got to give yourself. Yo, okay, here we go. A minute left. Stall call's coming, I think, right? If he goes out and maybe goes one, two, two tacks again, we're looking probably a four, two. Oh, nice oh, shot. And he whistle. times it. I thought he timed it. That was close. That's a nice shot. It's going to be exciting one minute here. There it is. Boom, There's stall. Okay. Stall. One minute. So a four, two, minute, minute stall left, green, minute and a half one point time. Red. So, you know, a takedown here. Um, in the next 30 seconds, you can ride out for the win. Under 30 seconds, going to go to overtime. There's another shot from Hamidi, but once again, they find themselves on the edge. And now looking to score, counter score there is Hamidi, or excuse me, Aleznik. Now they come up to their feet on the edge, 34 seconds to go. I'm sorry, takedown ties it, ties it. Yeah, it's 4-2 on the score. They didn't put that stall point up. It depends when the takedown comes, if it comes for him, Eddie, if it'll erase riding time or not. But Oleznik is just seven seconds away from having that riding time point coming. He's, I, he might, you know, Oleznik might try and time this on the whistle one time just to kind of keep the ref away from hitting him for a stall call. So we're looking at four to two, 30 seconds left, minute 24 seconds of riding time. It's going to be exciting last 30 seconds. Yes. I think this, uh, this break favors Oleznik probably yeah. a little more, you know, just kind of not refocus. Because you get in that think scramble, you get a call, your mind starts running around. Now you get a chance to really refocus. Hamidi's just, I mean, man, he's missed out on so many leg attacks. He's yeah. just been all over the place. Like, he's just like, you know, it's something that you're going to have to go back. And, and although you're an exciting wrestler and you're trying to score, you've just, a lot of scoring opportunities have kind of slipped through your fingers so far. But, um, you know, obviously you can still make it up here. 30 seconds left, but you got to go. All right, score's right. Here we go, last 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Hamidi needs a takedown. Collar tie, over collar there for Hamidi. He's been able to get the legs consistently. Finishing's been the problem. Oleznik hits a knee, brings himself towards the edge again. This has been a good strategy for Oleznik for this match. He stopped a lot of offense. Now he drops down, had the seatbelt momentarily. 10 seconds to go. Underhook on that right side. Three seconds to go, and oh, pancakes him as time Takedown expires. Green, three and a big flex back to Chris Perry, his coach. Isaac Oleznik, an 8-2 winner with riding time. Definitely the upset of the night so far, David. Your that winner by an 8-2 decision yes. from like, I mean, Oklahoma the, the State, Isaac Oleznik. Six minutes, it just seemed like committee was on him, on him, on him. If you you looked away, you'd think the score, you'd have three or four takedowns, but just not good finishing on the edge, Con constantly going to the waist. And Oleznik just bought some time, bought some time. That quick ankle pick was a big difference maker. Um, and just savvy mat wrestling, I mean, or savvy edge wrestling, that was the big difference maker. And then icing it here with the takedown, so. Yeah, the adjustments for Hamity are, are pretty clear and obvious. You get the finishes, you make that, you make your action start in the middle of the mat. He probably can't use that edge to his advantage. But as it stands, a big win for Oklahoma State's Isaac Oleznik. And we come back, an NCAA Finals rematch from two years ago. Makai Lewis versus Carter Storacci, 174 pounds when we return. All right, we're gonna play a little hide and seek here now. We got a good Pennsylvania boy here. Elijah Fultz is in the middle, he's blindfolded. We're gonna give him 45 seconds to crawl around whatever he touches. He's going home with some great flow wrestling swag here tonight. Elijah, are you ready? Give me a nod, kid. I'll take that as a yes. 45 seconds on the clock. On your marks, get set, go! Help him out, there's a water bottle. Help him out, fans. Come on, Elijah, you can do it. There's a t-shirt, get the t-shirt. Come on, Elijah, back this way. Let's go, you got 20 seconds. Oh, so close, so close. There, we got that one. We got 10 seconds. Come on this way. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, Elijah.
Elijah. Great job. You can tell he's a wrestler. Give it up for Elijah, folks. He earned that one. Give him that hat. Give him that hat. Appreciate you tuning in to this all-star action live from Rec, and Rec Hall. And it's nothing but ones versus twos for the rest of the night. Starting with 174 pounds, we're gonna see Makai Lewis of Virginia Tech versus Carter Storacci of Penn State. And now introducing our wrestlers at 174. In the green, a junior from your Nindy Lions and current number one, Carter And his opponent in the red, a senior from Virginia Tech and current number two, Makai Lewis. Man, cannot wait for this one. I know Makai Lewis has had this match circled for quite some time, wanting to right the wrong from last year's All-Star Classic and put himself in the pole position for potentially a second NCAA title while Carter Storacci is looking for number four, David. Yeah, I'm excited for this match. I, I remember watching Makai Lewis wrestle in high school and you know, in the New Jersey State Tournament. I'm like, man, this kid's different. He, he, he was just good. You know, Carter coming up from Pennsylvania, just been kind of like a winner his entire life. And then just, of course, these guys have been on a clash course collision. And 174 during the tenure of these guys has just been bananas. Like, there's not any easy matches. And these guys have constantly been able to rise to the top. Um, you know, Makai is, you know, very explosive, really good reattacks. That's probably his best thing. Carter, you know, he can attack from many, many situations. Carter is one of the most fierce competitors I've ever been around in my entire life. The guy has wrestled through injuries year after year after year, like significant injuries, broken bones, sprained ligaments, and at the national tournament, little practice time, he just finds a way to win. He grits matches out. Um, sometimes he makes it a little harder than himself, and right away he's in on a leg attack. Switches to head outside. He's really good from this position, trying to drape over the top and get an ankle. Is Makai Lewis trying to better position himself there for the finish? Is Carter Storacci, who's now attacking below the knee, grabbing the foot. And Makai's got. You know, Makai's doing a good job of keeping his far leg away. Carter's staying very patient in here. You know, he's rolling his head back now on the inside. He's looking to capture that wrist, which is interesting. If he, you know, Makai's got really strong hips. He's starting to walk, 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 trying to walk his feet back in the baseline. And Carter pops right back up. That's something that early in this match we didn't see guys doing enough. Staying patient. And now again, Makai rolling his head. I mean, just incredible defense. Man. Incredible defense there by Makai. Um, but, you know, I just think... Carter looks like he's just kind of in an offensive mindset so far in this match. Um, what a great start to first minute, 20 seconds here. Great opening attack from Carter. Great defense from Makai Lewis. Nothing surprising about that opening exchange. You know, we hadn't really seen Carter in their previous matches get on that first period scoring situation. Because, um, you, you know, I definitely have to respect Makai's reattack ability, but just his baseline defense, I mean, that's just something to take home. You know, he wasn't settling for just over top, hanging on to ankles and rolling through. What you learn your first day of wrestling? Baseline, walk your legs, One get minute. back baseline, V's at your knees, you know. Um, and now Carter's right back on him, but Carter's wrestling a really hard first two minutes here. Switches to the other leg. Hard wizard there from Makai Lewis, trying to get that foot up as Carter Storacci cuts him back the other way, nothing yet. Makai sitting on his 
but and able to get the foot off the mat. They go out of bounds. Action call. Good defense by Makai once again, but a great attack, Scarachi. Incredible. Incredible defense. I mean, that's like, that's a, I, I mean, people don't, can't defend like that. You know, he's done it now. He's done it. Uh, that, was, that was incredible. Um, but, you know, it just, this starts to wear on you, you know, for Makai. He's already, you know, we're minute, two and a half minutes in. He's kind of getting out of stance. Stance seems to be getting a little high. 30 seconds. Uh, stall call. Stall and I think warning. The crowd starts to get a little bit involved. And, and Carter is, he looks like he's feeling it. He's definitely wrestling a hard pace. And he's, he's just going to attack him there. nonstop. Nice shot again from Starachi. Locked around the crotch is Makai Lewis. He's been defending well, but it's Starachi that's relentless in the attack. And this looks like he's maybe in a little better position seconds. here to win this scramble. But staying on the ankles, Makai Lewis. Nothing yet. But could this be Makai's scoring opportunity? And time's going to run out on this period in the middle of a great scramble. No score. That's the end of the first One period. We are still scoreless. The only difference in this match, but it's been a lot of offense from Carter Storacci. Carter was all over him that period. Um, and, and, and that last takedown, Carter got in that nice swim, high C, and cracked him down. And I think that Makai might have hurt his knee a little bit. I, I was kind of interested in the way he fell. Um, it looks like, you know, that's going to be, uh, we'll kind of see how that affects, you know, as you get in his period. But this this is where Carter has had a big difference maker in their matches so far. And in a lot of Carter's matches in college is he rides people hard. Um, and I think that's something that he's working on this year is really trying to turn these riding into turning points. So we'll see here. Obviously, this is a tough match. I'm my number two guy in the country. Um, but I know his mentality this year is, yeah, I can ride everybody. I need to start turning people if I truly want to really open them up. So good forward pressure here so far in the opening moments of the second period. Now he's got Makai Lewis flattened out. He's pulling wrists out. And this crowd getting all the way behind Carter Storacci. Right now, Carter's pressure, I mean, he's just like, he's just driving forward, toes in the mat, a lot of weight. You know, now he's tacking that one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it's a ride that, you know, Coach Buxton and Blair Academy made, you know, kind of really famous, that kind of one-on-one -on -one off to the side. And he's working hard for this turn. I mean, a stall call is coming here, I think, if Makai doesn't get his head off the mat. Um, it's kind of inevitable based on just the, where we're at in, in the match so far. Now he's got the wing. Bar, yeah, it looks good, but able to clear out of it. Carter's kind of on a mission right now. Just you can intensity. tell he wants his turn. There's a stall point. You said it was Second coming. Second stall warning, one point three. On, on the back, pulls that wrist out. This is a tough position for Makai Lewis. Yeah, there's, I mean, now you get the bar. You know, I think when you get the bar, you want to jump to the half side. So he's on the bar. I mean, you're not going to turn a good wrestler with seconds. an arm bar, it's traditional arm bar. But if you get the arm bar, now you got a leg in, and now you're attacking this position. And you know, this is where Carter said he wanted to make a difference this year, and, and he is relentless right now. And now he's getting oh, swept. Ten seconds. Got four near fall. Four near fall Whoa. is such a game changer. Sending a message, Carter Storacci brings that leg all the way Four over. I think that was points green. Mental than a, looking for a, a turn there, but man, him, he was, you could tell right from the whistle, he wasn't looking for a ride out. You said it. Turning's a focus, and he you know, got four right there. In Carter's career, you know, he, he, whatever he says, he believes, you know? You might not believe it necessarily but when he says it, he believes it in his mind and, and this year you know I, he, you know winning four national titles is something that you know it's it's what he wants to do you know he tells i won four national titles i won the Olympics, and he's just driven you know and, after and right two now, periods he's driven, and he's wrestling with that and green with five maybe lewis in red he's zero hard, but now he's two minutes hard, running time that's a very very scary combination and we're talking about the number two guy in the country yeah no slouch, an NCAA champion in his own right back in 2019. Now, Storacci going to start the third period underneath. Already up to his feet, trying to fight those hands of Makai Lewis, and he's away. And he's right green. after. As soon as he turns and cuts, first steps forward, going after Makai Lewis. You can tell Storacci has bonus points on his mind as he's pulling on that head. So much pressure from Storacci. You know, Makai's going to have to kind of find something to reset a little bit. This match has just not gone the way that he anticipated, mm -hmm. you know, from really that first whistle. So with a minute and 20 seconds left here, you're going to have to try to find a small little victory to take home. Be like, all right, 
you know, yeah, whatever that may be, you want to find that so you can kind of work on that moving forward because, you know, the game plan that you had coming into it uh, wasn't that effective. Another single leg on the edge. This time he's able to step behind that foot, maybe a little better position for that finish, but the mat is going to be an obstacle as they go out of bounds. A lot of these attacks ended up on the edge. 6-0, the lead for Starachi, about a minute 49, riding time, and Makai slow to return to center. A little bit of a limp. And uh, don't expect any sympathy from Carter Starachi. No, I'd love for Carter maybe look back to one of those swings again, or, you know, one of those, like, outside steps off this whistle here. So uh, as Makai's hand's coming up, look to swim or look to cover ground, but I think he's going to actually look to go get to this one more takedown here and finish with the major. It just looks like that's the mentality he has. He's crowding him, not leaving Makai any room to breathe this last 40 seconds. He clears out of the tie. 37 seconds to go. You know, Back this, in on the shot, there's another stall point as Makai looks to reattack that single leg. 7-0. Now the score after three. that stall. Carter's reattacks are world class, you know, and now he's starting to match the offensive side to that side. And uh, if this is an indication of what his senior year is going to look like, he's going to score a lot of points. Man, he's just, it seems like he's either close to a takedown, he's Ten setting up seconds. a takedown, or pressuring really, really hard. And Makai just had not have an answer. There's the finish. Ten green, three point. And that is a message. 11-0 final for Carter Starachi. Your winner by major decision, Carter That was impressive wrestling, Christian. I just, that's all I got for you. I mean, it's, uh, Carter, Carter, he tells you what he thinks, and tonight he backed it up 100% of the time from start to finish, and that was dominant. That looks like a guy not just looking for his fourth title, but maybe looking for a Hodge Trophy. Those are the kind of performances when you separate against the best in the weight class. That's what a Hodge Trophy winner looks like. Something you won two of, David. It, it's evolved, you know. It's like back, you know, there was a time when you could win the Hodge Trophy because there were only a few undefeated wrestlers. And, you know, it came a time, well, okay, now there's 10 undefeated wrestlers. How do you separate yourself? It's techs and pins and bonus points. And now you're at a point where you have the best guys in the world are still in college. So yes. how do you separate yourself again? It's, it's bonus points. You know, it's major decisions, techs and pins, and it's, Going out and wrestling with that mentality, you know, that, that's a, that's a, that sets the tone for the rest of the country. And, and you know, again, it just builds your reputation. You're going to wrestle this guy again. Um, yeah. He's good wrestling. Well, a great job from Carter Starachi and the fans fired up to see him get the win. When we come back, 184 pounds, number one, Parker Keckheisen versus number two, Bernie Truax. Let's try our Plinko board one more time. We tried it twice, third time's a charm. Remember, north, south, east, west, let her go. Oh, we got it, hey! Oh, it's the west side with our winner. And now introducing our wrestlers at 184. In the green, a senior from Penn State and current number two, Bernie Truax. And his opponent in the red, a junior from Northern Iowa and current number one, Parker Kikaisen. 
There you see Parker Keck, guys, in top rank wrestler at 184 pounds for University of Northern Iowa. And making his Penn State debut, Bernie Truax, a transfer from Cal Poly, moving down from 197 pounds back to 184. These two have split a match apiece back from the 2022 NCAA tournament. And Man. excited to see how this one goes. Also, just like the size of Carter and Makai. I mean, those dudes, they look bigger than these guys. I, I was thinking the exact same thing. Like, Carter looked huge. We, we, they had some time to recover, you know? Like, this is not your traditional two-hour weigh-in. I mean, we're, I don't know how long we are. Four and, four and a half hours. Four and a half hours. That's not your typical weigh-in process. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that was, I, w I was right here. So this is an interesting thing like that as he's moving backwards. He can still cover ground. So that's going to be the thing right there. That's Sweet. what we're talking about. His lefty swing single, definitely his best leg attack. Well defended so far, but no. There's a three-point takedown right away for Bernie Truax. It's so incredible to have that type of scoring ability, you know, uh, to be able to do that. So that's going to be the battle. Parker's a move-forward kind of guy, a lot of action. And, uh, you know, Bernie can utilize that action to his ability so quickly. Um, you know, this guy's been right in the mix for three years in a row. You know, makes a transfer to Penn State, believing this is, this is going to be the answer for him to become a national champion. You know, that's a really good start in your rec hall debut, getting a takedown in 30 seconds. Quite back on her feet. So point. that's going to be the battle. Parker moving forward, utilizing, you know, moving forward, trying to, like, use his fakes to kind of wear him out. And, uh, you know, Bernie's going to be looking to constantly be able to score with those swings, and he can do them to both sides. So quick escape there for Keck Eisen. He's back hand fighting hard, trying to clear out of these ties from Bernie. Keck Eisen circling left, pawing, leading with that right hand. Nice, nice single here. leg there. Shin wizard from Bernie Truax. Bernie. Now pulling towards the edge. Going to make that, let's see, maybe an interesting call here on the edge. I guess they're going to go action. Bernie is uh, really good. You know, his days back in Cal Poly, I remember watching the national tournament and be like, how does this guy defend these leg attacks like he does? You know, he's so long and lanky, his, his splits and his wizards and his, his creativity and craftiness in those positions. Um, but it was good. You know, Parker, you know, it, you come into a place like this, you get taken down right away. How do you respond? And, and he's responded well. Nice. One way, nice then the other. Re attack. Misdirection there from Keck Eyes and going trying to, the, going to, to get beat these splits, but he gets that foot off the mat again. And they're talking about it, and they're gonna go action. Doug Schwab says, "Hey, he's he's pulling himself off the mat out of bounds. That should be a warning." So similar situation we saw with Alejnik and Hamidi, right? So Parker's got in there, um, being being proactive on your finish, just getting to the leg and thinking you're gonna get to the leg on a guy like that, and you're gonna finish can be really hard. You, your shot to your finish has to be part of your priority list because if you just get there and then think you're gonna finish One against a minute. guy that is really good there. It's going to be really hard. We saw it impact Hamidi. Now let's see what kind of re, re, uh, readjustments that Parker can get now. Uh, now he's, he's kind of not finished twice. 50 to go in the first period. Quite a few attacks so far. Yeah, very, very fast first period here. Parker's a brute, but he's a good athlete too. He's got good speed to the leg. We saw that misdirection. And there, another shot, well defended. 30 seconds. Bernie keeping that collar tie now cleared out. Oh, bloody nose for Bernie. Got to clean that up. So interesting start so far. You know, you, you said at the break, we we're talking about how this match would go. You said Bernie's going to come out and attack right away. And that's exactly what we saw. Gets that left-handed single and gets the the quick finish. Puts well, just, a little more pressure on Parker. You just kind of feel that vibe like, all right, I'm in rec hall, my first time, I want to get this first takedown. You know, I just think that's just the mentality that, I mean, that's the mentality I would want to have. You know, I'm walking out into a place like this, I want to establish this right away, but all right, I'm here, you know? And uh, he did a really good job, good finish here. And then off this takedown, you know, Parker's got two really good leg attacks, doesn't quite finish, so, um, about the first period that I was kind of thinking. We'll kind of see what happens here. This 20 seconds is huge. You know, kind of both. You've kind of got two, two, two mindsets here. One, it's like, I'm right, kind of just wait, not do anything, get to the second period. Or you go out and get a takedown here. Mm -hmm. Either guy 
that's a big that's a big score at the end of a period. Um, you can tell pretty much right away. Like, are you thinking about are you going to try to go get this, or uh, are we going to kind of just get out of this period and get to the next period? Yep. As they clean up the blood here, they're going to get back to center. Bernie Truex, final 20 seconds of this first period. Now underway, low-level attempt there from Parker Keckheisen. 16 seconds to go. There it is again. Nice Swing shot. from Bernie, not there this time. 10 seconds. Even when, you know, when you, like, when I think about swing singles, I think about Valencia, right? Zid Valencia is probably one of the best in recent and memory that I can think about that can cover four, ground on those swing singles, three. right? And not only he uses it on his four. offense, but he also uses it as just like a, a tactic to say, hey, I'm still here. You're, I'm, you still got to think about this, right? And as many times as he gets it, he misses it, but then he follows up with something else. You know, I think Bernie there, he, he gets it, and now he swings again. They didn't get it, but it's just like a reminder. Hey, all right, you're walking forward. My swing single is going to be there, you know, and I think that's a – I love the swing single score because of that. You know, it's a hard thing to be able to rotate your body and be able to hit that swing. I think it's something that you have to drill or lots and lots and lots of repetitions. It's different than a cover ground shot, but it's one that you can hit so quickly. And when you can hit – when you can cover that ground, it just constantly keeps somebody um, – when they're walking forward into you, it just keeps them on edge, keeps them on edge. So um, – and both of these guys hit that shot. So it'll be interesting to see who can – who can finish now as we get moving forward? They both have hit the same shot so far, but I love that shot. A little more blood to clean up before we get started with the second period. I missed the flip, don't know who has choice. We'll find out soon. It looks like Parker gonna go underneath to start the second period. The mat has not been a factor in either of their, their bouts. And don't anticipate a change there as Parker now looking for a reversal, he finds a leg. And now, no escape yet, so he's working for two. And they're gonna, Parker's gonna, oh, they're gonna give the loss of control there, okay. So he got the escape. So three, two on the scoreboard. Bernie Truax still in the lead. So interesting wrestling match. You know, you have this battle. You have the seven minute battle you're trying to figure out, but there's so many micro battles within that match. You know, it's every time you go out of bounds. Every time you come back in, you're just getting a read on your partner. You're trying to get an idea of like, how, is they, how are they reacting? It looks like he got dinged in the head on that shot. And I don't know if he's bleeding again or just give him a second to gather himself. But every action, every whistle start, every out of bounds, everything, you're just you're trying to see how is my opponent reacting? Am I going to keep doing the same thing? Am I going to change it up? You know, and it's just uh, it's just so fascinating in wrestling. And all that, you're bent over in a stance. You know, it's just like such a taxing thing on your body. You know, the things that uh, that wrestlers can do. It's, it's a pretty incredible at this level to see those micro adjustments. Kekaisen keeps pressuring forward, but just like you said, that swing single, Bernie keeps letting him know he's there. It's just the ultimate keep you honest shot, you know, because it, 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 you shoot it, gets you out of danger, but if you don't react, you're in the leg attack. And with these volume attackers, is it harder to hit? Go behinds on those guys because they shoot so much. Well, I think it's your recovery, right? I mean, if you're taking that, if you're taking shots like that and you stay down on the mat and your head's down, yeah, you're gonna go around that guy. But nice shot by Parker. But once again on the edge, can he get the finish? Maybe in a little better position this time. Shallow wizard. Keck isn't gonna try to pull him back in. At this point, you just gotta walk back to the center. Like you gotta keep going. Like it's not enough to just think you're gonna do it and then get back to the edge. Like you gotta keep getting up and keep pulling and keep pulling. And, and once keep again, they go out of bounds and the. Officials look at each other like, are we gonna hit him for this time? And they do. They hit him for stalling for going off the mat. Stall warning green. So Parker made an adjustment that time. So he hit his misdirection swing, and that time was more your knee over toe penetration, you know? So Parker's got a really wide skill set of offense. And you know, again, he's trying to figure out what's gonna work. Can I get to my swing? Can I get to my penetration? He's gonna have to solve the riddle on the edge of the mat. That's gonna be the difference maker for him so far. We got another blood and time. Bernie's Bleeding again, I think. So the defense of Truax has kept a lot of really quality attacks at Keckheisen. So far, only one stall call, but you know, a big difference with the with the three-point takedown era. It used to be that stall point could make out could make up for for a takedown differential. Now that could put you within one. If, if Bernie's able to get away in the in the third period, you're still probably gonna have to get a takedown. Yeah. Man, that's one area that I do not miss about transition and freestyle is scoring on the edge and wizards. 
freestyle, you just get up, you run the guy out of bounds, and you're rewarded from that. You know, and a lot of times in freestyle, you just got to get the guy internationally. You get a guy at the hip, you're getting a takedown. You know, a lot of times, how are you finishing? And folk style, man, it is just a different beast. It's hard enough to get the guy's leg, and then now the guy's in the splits, and they're wizarding you, and you're in bounds by a toe, and you got to finish here. It's just a, it's a craft, it's an art. It's something you have to spend a lot of time and repetitions doing. And we've seen it tonight make big differences in these matches. And these are national final level matches, you know? It's, uh, but that's why you wrestle them here. You, you figured out the all-star match, so you got to figure out what you got to do at the national tournament. Shallow single leg after another attack from Kekaisen. And we'll head to the third, 3-2 lead two periods, for Truax. I'm, I'm interested two, to see two, how hard does Kekaisen commit to this ride. He could ride out for the tie and go to overtime. I think you're gonna try. I think you're definitely gonna put a, a hard 10, 15 seconds and you're gonna see what the bottom guy's gonna do. You know, but I think if the guy really fights, he gets to his feet, you're probably thinking, hey, it's a takedown match anyways. Then it looks like he's about to cut him. Yeah, quick tripod, and there's the escape. 4-2 on the That's scoreboard, eight, riding time, not a factor. Truax leading 4-2 right now, but Kekheisen is not gonna stop his pursuit of a takedown. Been closed so many times. There's that swing once more. The swing's so good too because it changes your position, right? Your butt's on the edge, you swing, and now you're at least you're in a neutral position, or maybe even back butt in the center, you know? So there's value in that shot in a lot of ways. You know, maybe you're just thinking, oh, it's just a single leg, but it's it's way more nice than that. Low shot there by Kekeisen. Same situation, has the foot up on the hip, trying to get into a better position once again. Out of bounds. Foot gets on the mat. And that's it, they go back to center. Now, at this point, refs are looking for it. They're looking for right. every single time you get to the edge. Um, that's something they're keeping an eye on. But at some point, Kaizen's gonna have to try and find a way to like get to his leg attack in the center of the mat. Um, and it's, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's a difficult thing to do, but. He's pressuring forward here, but Bernie's kinda floating a little bit back. One minute. And there's a stall point again, or stall call again, making it 4-3, 51 stall seconds. Morning, Bernie's gonna have to stay more engaged. Red. He's kind of floating to the edge. Yeah. He's gonna have to stay in hand fight maybe a little bit more. He Fif could give up another stall point. Yeah, 50 seconds left. This stall call is very, very much in play. Like, I mean, it's it's if, if Parker puts one, two shots together, gets on a shot, puts him on the edge, I think the stall call is going on the board. And there's your little swing, keeping the guy, you know, reminding the ref, hey, I'm, I'm still active. Don't hit me for stalling. Um, but, you know, Parker, I think as much as looking for a takedown here, he's thinking stall call, but he's going to have to, it's got to be more than walk forward. It's got to be a couple shots in a row. The referee's got to really think that you've earned it. 20 seconds left. He's got to probably put another couple together. Relentless from Kekheisen. 20 seconds to go. Bernie staying in the fight as best he can. He's got a one-point lead. The ref almost coming. called it. There it, there it is. We're tied. Now looking for the finish. Oh, morning, he could take the lead here with the finish. Is he going to get seconds. it? He drags the toe. What's the call? Three points on the edge. Kekheisen into the lead. Take Final seven red. seconds. Just stayed on him. You know, he just stayed on him. The referee, you can see he's looking for it. He's looking for it. And uh, looks like, are we challenging? Penn State looks like they're challenging the... The call and the takedown, but I uh, it, it, it looked like a takedown. Yeah, nothing to lose here for, for the Penn State side, but man, just relentless pursuit of that takedown. I'm getting I'm getting yelled at right now because we don't have a bigger mat, but it's not my mat. It's Christian's mat. Not my mat. I love this mat. And there's the takedown. Does the takedown? He keeps that left toe in the whole time. Barely drag the toe. That's the takedown. Take Seven four. Parker's relentless. I mean, he earned that one. I mean, he was relentless from here in the stall, here in the takedown. Vigilance paying off here. Seven seconds. Just needs to hang on. This last little bit drops down. Doubles off for the finish. Locked hands at the end, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be a technical violation at the end, but a 7 5 win. Seven minutes of action there from both guys. A solid debut by Bernie Truax, but Parker Kekheisen going to stay on top at 184. Parker.
Pick Corbin did some really good things. I mean, he mixed it up. He had his misdirection swing going. He had his penetration. And just that relentless mentality that you just love to see from a competitor. You know, he's just like, hey, I, I don't know how I'm going to get it done, but I'm going to find a way to get it done. You know, two stall calls and then a takedown with, with a short time left. Um, you know, these guys are going to see each other again. They've wrestled three times. You know, there's a lot of good things that both guys can take from this match. It's a high-level match. Um, you can't replicate that type of intensity in practice. You really can't, you know, until you're out there. These are guys that you're going to see in the mix be national champs at the end of the year. Um, now that, you know, Aaron Brooks has moved up to 197 pounds. Great performance there by Parker Keck, guys. And, you know, he was on the single, on the single, then doubles off. That was the secret ingredient, the special ingredient he needed to get that takedown. Coming up, another one versus two. Aaron Brooks versus Tanner Sloan when we return. two more matches, but we got more t-shirts to give away. If you didn't get one earlier, get one now. Who wants it out there? Make some noise. Welcome back. There you see the banners for Penn State NCAA champions. Of course, my sidekick here, David Taylor, was here for the first four NCAA team titles. How special was it bringing home those four titles for Penn State? Yeah, it was a momentum builder. You know, I remember we were young kids and we were here at Penn State. We believe we can win one national championship and then that one and the next one and it became just the expectation. We all believed that we could win individually and we could win as a team and it's continued to, to grow as time's gone on. It's absolutely continued. Here we go, 197 pounds. And now introducing our wrestlers at 197. In green, a senior from the Nittany Lions, Aaron And his opponent in red, a senior from South Dakota State, Tanner Sloan. There you see number two, Tanner Sloan, made the NCAA Finals last year. Great wrestler from the top position out of the state of Iowa, wrestling at South Dakota State. And there you see his opponent, Aaron Brooks, of Penn State, moving up to 197 pounds, and he looks every bit of it, David. Yeah, you know, Aaron is really filled in his weight class. You know, I would expect him to come out, really, really look to score early. You know, I think 
you know, he and Carter are really good friends, and there's definitely a little bit of, like, this competition of, like, who can score more points? You know, I remember, uh, you know, when I was at school, you know, my Ed Ruth and myself kind of yeah. had a similar mentality to that, and we just, like, constantly elevate each other's games, and I think you see that. Both of these guys are three-time national champions. Both guys are looking to be four-time national champions. You know, they've been pushing each other since the time they got here. Um, so I'm excited to see Aaron's debut here, 197 pounds. You competed against Aaron. What are the keys to wrestling someone as good as Aaron Brooks? What do you have to watch out for? Everything. All right. Everything. I mean, Aaron <laughs> is just the, he, he has the entire package. I mean, his, his leg attacks, his re-attacks, his strength, his endurance, everything. You know, he's just, and, and, and one of his most underrated skills in folk styles is top wrestling. I mean, he is very, very good on top, whether it's cradles or tilts. Um, just his evolution as he's been here at Penn State is, uh, it's been pretty remarkable. And, you know, he looks really good at 197 pounds. I know for him, going up to 197 pounds was to get bigger, obviously for the Olympic run next year at 86 kilos. And uh, he looks really good at this weight class. Minute 10 in, no points on the board yet. No one hit a knee yet for a leg attack. Curious if we'll see Brooks get to his underhooks where he can set up a lot of his offense and also just, just a, a ton of pressure for his opponent. You know, Aaron has great underhooks. Um, you know, he, he, last year, a lot of underhook offense at the U23 World Championships, a lot of ankle pick offense, you know? So it's one of those things like, he's got a nice swim high C. So it's just like, you, you, there's a, he's so dynamic and there's so many scoring things that are coming at you. And he also wrestles, you know, he wrestles a pace. It's a forward pace and it adds up as time goes on. Leg attack there from Sloan. Brooks able to snap out of it. Minute three to go here in this first period. One minute. And Sloan gets at wrist. Brooks had a little bit of difficulty getting him off. Grip strength of Sloan, definitely an attribute he has. And there's that swim you're talking about in deep. Great position for this finish, doubles off. There's three for Brooks. Take down Green. Yeah, it's just, three I mean, point. just that skill. I mean, he's attacking. He's attacking your head. He's attacking your head. And boom, disappear. We saw Carter hit very similar leg attacks. And these guys are, they study the sport. Carter and Aaron, Greg, you know, these guys, they're, they're, they're friends. And they study wrestling all the time. They're always watching. They always have something they're working on. And, um, you know, it's just they're constantly improving. It's, it's, and they improve at a very fast rate. But that's just, I mean, that skill, it, that outside step was an inter, kind of like an international Russian thing, and I think that we've seen it develop now. I mean, we just saw Marcus Blaze do an outside step to Matt Ramos at mm -hmm. the Clarion Open last year, or whatever, a couple weeks ago, you know, junior in high school. So, you know, it's, it's trickling itself down. You see this high-level wrestling. These guys are seeing it. They're analyzing it. It works. It's different, and they're implementing it. Um, and to do it to that side is really hard. You know, the right leg lead outside step, that's not your traditional way to do it. Um, and it's very effective. They're dropping down the leg, making sure he wants to get this ride out. And with two seconds to go, Brooks about to get slow, nearly had that escape, was able to turn and face, but not enough to earn that escape point. Now he goes back under. And you mentioned the ride, 42 seconds of riding time already for Brooks. Tough to get away from. Time. First period in the books. After one period, the score Flip Sloan goes green. And, zero. Brooks, and Brooks is going to start green. the second period underneath. This is an opportunity for Tanner. He's going to commit to this ride as best he can, but quick tripod by Brooks. There's a lot of urgency, and man, he gets green, up right green. away. One point. 4 0 for Brooks. 35 seconds of riding time maintained. This is where Aaron can really kind of start to separate himself here in the second period. Get that takedown, get that ride out. A little bit more methodical, right? We saw Carter come out and just boom, 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 boom. You know, Aaron's just like a little bit more methodical in his approach. Um, and and I even and for Tanner at this point, right? Where you've you've you you've given up one takedown. Okay, you've given up one takedown. Um, you felt you felt the outside step. Okay, well, what adjustments can you make? What kind of adjustments can you make to try and get to your offense, get a takedown here in this period? Some level changes there and fakes. There's that same shot. He's in deep again. Great head position on this attack. Wrestling back in is Tanner Sloan, but he's going to follow down. Take and down it's three more for Aaron Brooks. 7-0. Now minute. the lead. Just incredible. Incredible leg attack. You know, two very, very identical shots. First one a little bit, a little bit more to the outside, kind of get his legs that time just very deep. When you hit an outside step, your focus is focusing on getting, getting your hips to the guy's shin. If you can get your hips to his shin, 
typically everything else follows or gets your chest to his leg. First one, a little bit far away. Second one, good adjustments. I mean, he was deep and, and to the finish really before there was much reaction time. Sloan up to his feet and away, Sloan making it 7-1, 30, 30 seconds to go in the second period. And you see that underhook and just crowds him, driving in, hard wizard down by Sloan, but drops to that ankle, puts it on the hip. You want to shelf this, Aaron now you will get height. So once you have a shelf, now you start getting up. You get up and you start circle back to his back Ten leg. Seconds. So as you get up, you know, obviously you got to kind of limp your arm out, get that far ankle, get the takedown. There's your takedown in the Takedown, green for three points. Brooks is an interesting physique because he looks like he's compact, but he's got After these long arms period. able to pull in that far the ankle. Just great awareness. You know, it's one of those things we learn. You know, Coach Kale Sanderson has that, where you hit the leg and you just have that awareness how you rotate around and catch that far ankle. Ed Ruth was amazing at yes. it as he hit it. And you, you, before you knew it, you had the far ankle, you're falling down. You know, it's just, it's repetitions, it's feel, it's awareness. Um, and it looks effortless, but there's a lot of hard work that goes into that to make it look effortless like those guys can do that. You mentioned the little back and forth competition you and Ed had. Now, Starachi had the 11-0 against Makai Lewis. We'll see if Brooks is able to match that margin of, of, uh, of victor, if Tanner Sloan can maybe respond and get something going this last period. It's amazing how this the three-point takedown has really changed, you know, the guys that are truly lead on their feet um, and how they get the score. It's so different now than what it was. You know, it's like it, for the same amount of work, there is more reward. You know, if you go out and you get four takedowns and four escapes, it's not an 8-4, 8-5 match anymore. You know, the score does reflect that. I would like to see with the three-point takedowns, I think the major decision should be bumped up to 10 points. Um, because, you know, points are just scored. I mean, you're talking about now with a three-point and four-point near fall, you know, a takedown in the back is a major decision. So I think, you know, we should maybe after this year adjust 10-point major decision. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's the takedowns, three-point takedowns started and seem to be working really good, and it kind of does reflect the guy that is getting the most amount of takedowns on the scoreboard. Brooks clears that wrist tie. 50 seconds to go. Riding time at 129, so... Close to being locked up for Brooks. Shot attempt there from Sloan, can't get in. Good baseline defense from Aaron Brooks, not letting him in. 30 seconds. Now final 30. We'll see if Brooks pushes for that next takedown. He's got the major at hand already. Looks for a single leg. Nice reattack by Tanner Sloan. He's looking for that far ankle. Brooks hightailing it towards the edge. Ten Sloan seconds. trying to pull in. Almost had that far ankle. Not able to do so. Seven seconds to go. Brooks pawing at the head, trying to keep him away. And time's going to run out. No score on the edge. And with riding time, an 11 2 major decision. Number one, Aaron Brooks over Tanner Sloan. Straight wrestling. It's great wrestling. Um, you get an opportunity to wrestle the number two guy in the country, and you can you can score 11 points. He did it with uh, with ease, really. You know, so what adjustments can he make in the national tournament? In the quest for four, um, he's well on his way. Yeah, and we're going to see some of these takedowns. Now we've seen so many single legs stymied with the uh, with the wizard. Is finishing head outside just a better overall position? Uh, I think it's preference, but I think, yeah, if you're, if you're wrestling a guy and you're having a hard time wizard, well, then you head outside, it takes the wizard away, you know? So guys that are creative at creating space, they're going to do that. Um, but ultimately, you have to have confidence. Your hands are locked, whether your head's on the inside or head on the outside. You want to be a national champion. You want to be a world champion. You want to be an Olympic champion. Your hands locked, you got to finish. You know, you got you to gotta find ways to finish that. So, so tonight, that's been a big thing. You know, these guys that separate themselves in clean finishes, the guys that are finding themselves in this tight match, they're slipping away, their finishes are not very clean. Yeah. When we come back, final match of the evening, number one, Greg Kurtfleet versus number two, Wyatt Hendrickson.
Time's been flying. This has been a really fun evening of wrestling, and we're already down to our last match. Of course, appreciate the fan support here at Penn State. We're in wrestling country, no doubt about it. And now introducing our wrestlers at the heavyweight division. Wrestling in green, a junior from Penn State and current number one, Greg Cookley. And his opponent in red, a senior from Air Force and current number two, Wyatt Hendrickson. There you see Wyatt Hendrickson, one of the most dangerous wrestlers in the country. The pin leader from last year, always going for it. His opponent, Greg Kerfleet of Penn State. David, you were shaking your head as he was running out here. What a why? These dudes are specimens. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible to think about like where heavyweight has evolved to. I mean, it's amazing. And these guys are big and I mean, they're, they're such good athletes. The wrestling that we're gonna see here is gonna be incredible. Um, and I just think about the only partners in the country for these guys are each other. Like you can't get people to come in and wrestle these guys. Right. You know, they, they don't make people that look like this. You know? Not many. Like, there's not many. Maybe you throw a couple of them out there. Maybe get they wrestle on two or three guys at one time. But, I mean, it's just... Shot, reshot, oh, nice and a reattack from Greg Kirkley. Hendrickson gets all across to the fall. Can he get the band in the first period? Fighting with that half. And Hendrickson able to recover. But the damage is done. Four near fall. Seven on Kirkley. Just like that. I think he rolled his ankle and up And maybe a little... Attack. Injury time here for Hendrickson. What an opening start here as you see Hendrickson limping. And it was kind of attack, re-attack, and another attack from Greg. Those were heavyweights. Yes. That, those were heavyweights. I mean, the, the, that movement in 30 seconds, like I said, it's just like that much power, and it's just unbelievable. And just the awareness of these guys. I mean, you're talking about, you're talking about a shot, re-attack, re-attack within 20 seconds. So shot, outside step, re-attack, re-attack, run corner. I mean, Greg's trying to outside step just like we just saw. We saw these guys student of the sport, right? We saw Carter outside step. We saw Aaron outside step. We saw Greg come out right off the back. Uh, Hendrickson goes to re-attack it. Greg just stays, stays down in his stance, runs down that shot into a cradle. I mean, again, this is number Crazy one, number start. two in the country. Big guys aren't supposed to be able to move like this. I mean, you think about, you think about what we just saw at heavyweight. You just, 10 years ago, you don't see that. No. Five years ago, you don't see that. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So Greg will have choice after White took injury time. So he's going to go underneath and try to get that escape point. So one thing, Greg, this year, I know he made an effort to, to trim down. He's trimmer than he was last year. You know, he realized, yeah, I felt like I was a little bit too big. I think he walks around 240, 245 pounds. I mean, and this guy's built like a refrigerator. Yeah. I mean, he is put together. He's just this combination of strength and athleticism. And uh, this new weight looks good on him. He's moving really good so far. And he's up and out right away. 8-0 lead in the first minute. But Wyatt Hendrickson's pinning ability means he's never out of a match. Kirkfleet throws off a little bit of the tape as they reset. These guys have both represented our country and age group world championships. So you're talking about, yeah, best guys in the country. We're talking about some of the best guys in the world. You put these guys in the senior level world championships, you know, for the United States, you know, they're going to be battling. You're talking about these guys, talking about Gable Stevenson. Um, Nick Wazdowski, Mason Paris. I mean, we're just so gifted right now with these amazing heavyweights um, and their ability to wrestle and wrestle at a very, very high level. Yeah, both age level medalists at the world stage and certainly contenders on the senior level circuit as well. I'm sure both will be vying for that Olympic spot, 125 kilograms in April here at the Bryce Jordan Center on the campus of Penn State. Yeah, the Olympic trials here in April are going to be are going to be pretty credible. I mean, it's going to be a generational event. If you guys don't have tickets to this event, you're going to want to get there. Um, just 
you, just thinking about what the United States has currently, what the future holds, and everybody could be competing Low against each other. For Greg, As looking Greg for just, more, and he's got that Turk also. Can he convert near fall? So we saw this earlier. So we get in this Turk, you want to take your time. You keep stay above the knee, focus on a football. So you want to take your, your palm of your hand, you want to lift the guy's forehead, and then you want to get under his chin. Once you're under his chin, then you start lifting your elbow, or you start hopping. You start hopping his feet towards his butt and putting him in danger. But, you know, finishing Turks, this is a huge deal. I mean, you're talking about a tech fall. Like, you finish this Turk, the match is over. Crazy. And Hendrickson able to defend. But Greg is also really good on top. He's got a really good tilt. He's got a really good ride. Um, you can see him starting to scoop that knee and bump. But you want to finish on top here. 20 seconds left. There's no reason to you know, give this escape if you're thinking bonus points. And for Wyatt, you want to get this escape, right? You want to, in this period, like this period did not go the way you want it to go. Getting this escape goes a long way. And tur good turn and cut with three seconds to go. Good hustle from Hendrickson getting on the board 11-1 as we head to the third period. We saw 12 no, points, 12 points we... scored at heavyweight in three minutes. That's insane. Number one, number two guys in the country. This was a 4-2 win for Greg last time they wrestled. And the three-point three takedown, the four-point near falls, they change things, right? It, I mean, it definitely changes things. It's not, it's not, you can't necessarily compare scores now to scores in, in, in the past because it's different. Um, but in terms of w w action and scoring in the first period, I mean, that's uh, obviously a lot of action and a lot of scoring. 12-1 for Kirkfleet. Riding time at 44 already. Hendrickson pressure him forward, another shot, same low double. He's gonna get it, takedown, 15 to one now the score. And he's got the leg split again, David. Now able to get those knees down is Hendrickson. 15 to one, riding time approaching a minute. Now we're talking about a tech fall. A couple months ago, in, four, in, this in was three a close minutes decision. and 45 seconds. Three minutes, 45 seconds, 16 points. Now Hendrickson's struggling to build here. You know, I think, you know, Penn State over the last few years, you know, they work really hard on top, really hard on top. And, you know, it looks to me like the effort is now, we're, we're, they're trying to turn people. And uh, I think he forgot. He forgot the wrist. Yeah, I forgot the wrist. Hey, so turn them, you're going to keep the wrist. That, that definitely is part of that. But, hey, listen, I like seeing that. You're going for it. You make a mistake, I get escaped. So what? You're on your feet. Let's go get a takedown, right? You know, you could sit on top, but, you know, that's been a big adjustment for Greg in the past. You know, sometimes he's been willing to give up a goal behind there, and that's something that, that uh, you know, I know Kyle Snyder has a huge impact on Greg. Hey, Greg, man, no goal behinds, right? And I feel like that Greg, with this attitude Double and this strength, this, this mentality, and no goal behinds, that's a scary, it's a scary Greg Kirkwood right there. Test ball. Takedown on the edge makes it 18-2. Greg Kirkley, a tech ball. Last time they wrestled, one takedown was scored, it was Hendrickson. A couple months later, the most dominant win of the night. Yeah. Greg Kirkfleet. Amazing. An incredible performance there. Now you wrestle with a lot of guys in, in the Knit and Line Wrestle Club. You ever wrestle with him? No. Okay. You no, know, I do help me every once in a while. Greg asked me, and I just, you know, my mindset is like, I'm in survival mode. <laughs> I'm like, uh, but I mean just I, I'm speaking out of out of, of personal experience. I mean, it, you're, it's like wrestling a refrigerator. He's just so strong and fast and explosive. Um, I don't know if he really understands his full potential. And it looks like that match. It's like that's the best record I've ever seen. Um, and if you're starting a season like that, uh, the future this season and beyond is bright for him. Man, just a, a jaw-dropping performance. You know, as we're wrapping up here, David. Apart from that incredibly dominant heavyweight match, what else sticks out to you from tonight? Well, I think you're talking about finishing. I think the, di the difference in the guys that we saw dominate matches tonight, they finished their shots clean. The guys that maybe had matches get away from them or had a harder time, they weren't finishing clean. So as you saw later in the matches, you when you're seeing world-level guys, 
quick finishes, feet off the ground. We talked about that a lot earlier in the broadcast. So take that home. In folk style, you got to finish on the edge. You got to get the feet off the ground. You got to have quick, quick finishes. And as we saw later in the night, the guys that were dominating, that were scoring with what looked like ease, a lot of work goes into that, but quick finishes. Three point takedown, the rules changes. How are you liking them? I like three-point takedown. I think it incentivizes these guys to go out and score and keep scoring takedowns. I think in their mind they can score and they can keep scoring. I love mat wrestling. I think mat wrestling is the true indicator of dominance, but now we're just shifting. Wrestling shifts, you got to shift as an athlete. If three-point takedown is the way to go and you want to be great on the mat, now you can be dominant in a lot of areas. As we leave you with a couple shots, I want to remind you, December 1st and 2nd, one of the best tournaments of the year. Cliff Keen, Las Vegas, live on Flow Wrestling, December 1st and 2nd. I'll be there. I cannot wait for that tournament. Um, David, you know, you've got a busy year ahead of you. Uh, you're trying to make another Olympic team. Wit, what are you looking forward to most? What's next for David Taylor? I'm excited for the process. You know, um, the process isn't new to me at this point. You know, 2024 Olympic gold is on my mind. You know, people talk about it. Um, it's just what it's just what it's what I'm working towards. Um, in terms of competition standpoint, my wife we're due with another baby coming in February. There's not a lot of competitions this year, so most likely going to be getting ready, gearing up for the Olympic trials here in April. In, in the meantime, you know, I just started a YouTube channel, so I'll be following, putting a lot of in-depth content in this lead up to the Olympic Games. So if you want to follow follow that, uh, follow my social media. But for the most part, I'm a pretty open book. I tell you what's going on in my life. Um, it's it's busy. It's it's. Um, but it's a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to this 2024 Olympic year. It's gonna be very challenging and, um, you know, but that's why we do it. Well, we're, we're looking forward to watching you, David, and we're so thankful to have you on tonight. This has been a blast, it's been an honor for me. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. For our production team, I'm Christian Piles for David Taylor. Thanks so much and happy Thanksgiving. The sport of wrestling provides so many with a bigger purpose. Wrestling becomes a part of you. You're faced with so many challenges in the sport, but skin infections shouldn't have to be one of them. And that's our mission. Defense Soap was created out of the need to fight back because we care about this sport, the families, the athletes, the coaches, and we want to continue to protect people from skin infections to keep you on the mat. And that's our goal here at Defense Soap, to defend what you have built.